Good evening, everybody. Let's uh, let's give it a minute. Let the uh, the room fill up a little bit. We'll get started. Okay, looks like we leveled off at about 44 participants. That's 32 attendees, 33 attendees. Okay, uh, if we could come to order, please, let's get started. And let me just share my screen. Hello, everybody. How you doing, commissioners? Eddie, how you doing? I'm okay. Okay, if everybody could please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance Just to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. To the Republic, Republic and which under God, and God, liberty and justice for all. And justice and justice for all. all right, thanks everybody. Uh, could I have a sunshine announcement, please, Erica? Yes, um, tonight is Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021, and this is a Jersey City Planning Board meeting with a scheduled start time of 5.30 p.m. In an effort to adhere to social distancing protocols and best practices imposed by city and state authorities, the City of Jersey City canceled all public meetings until further notice. As a result, this planning board meeting is being held virtually as a video conference that is open to the public in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice of this meeting has been given to the editor of the Jersey Journal, the Jersey City Reporter, and posted with the, Jer or with the city clerk on January 25th, 27th, and 28th. This meeting was also posted on the Jersey City Division of City Planning webpage, and all distribution materials made available to the board were published and available to the public. Okay, thanks, Erica. Uh, could we have a roll call, please? Yes. Um, Vice Chair Gonzalez. Here. Uh, Commissioner Thakor. Here. Commissioner Horton. Present. Dr. Desai. Here. Commissioner Gangadin. Here. Commissioner Torres. Here. And Chairman Linkson. Here. Seven present. Thank you. Uh, could we swear in the staff, please, Mike? I see Cameron, Tim. Erica and Mallory, you guys swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, do we have any correspondence, Erica? Yes. Um, in addition to the three items that at the top of the agenda that are adjourned, which I'll repeat, our case uh, P20-093, 181-189 Academy Street, that is carried to the February 16th meeting with preservation of notice. <laughs> Case P20-070 for 626 Newark Avenue is carried to February 16th for preservation of notice. And case P20-155 for 198 Academy Street is carried to February 16th for preservation of notice. And one additional item that is carried is item number 21 for case P20-115 for 15 Park Lane South. That is also carried to the February 16th, 2021 meeting with preservation of notice. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's get right into new business, everybody. Uh, we'll call case P21-004 is a section 31 review for casino in the park. Uh, the address being 679 West Side Avenue. There, if you may. I think we were gonna swear in Dr. Desai. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Desai, do you swear or affirm? <laughs> do you swear or do you affirm, Dr. Desai? I swear. Okay. So Dr. Desai has been reappointed as a planning board member, and now we're going to administer the oath of the office. So Dr. Desai, if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. 
I state your name. I Vichia Desai. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties of the office. Perform all the duties of the office. Of planning board member. Of planning board member. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And I will support. And I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of United States. The st Constitution of the State of New Jersey. The Constitution of State of New Jersey. And the laws and ordinances of the city of Jersey City. And laws and ordinances of city of Jersey City. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to same. And to the governments established in the United States. And the government established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of people. Thank you, Dr. Desai. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, doctor. Congratulations. Happy to have Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Good to have, Good you, to have you back. Congratulations, Dr. Congratulations, Dr. Desai. Thank you. Erica, we will need to have Dr. Desai just sign the oath. So if we could get that to her and she can sign it so we have it on file. Will do. Okay, thank you guys. All right, so let's call uh, case P21-004. It's a section 31 for Casino in the Park. The address is 679 West Side Avenue. Um, Erica, we should be looking for Francesca Girantana and Michael O'Connor. Yeah. In there somewhere. We have two hands raised. Uh, oh, there's Francesca, yeah. <clears throat> Mike O'Connor's here. Good evening, Council. Good evening. And uh, I'd ask if you could also uh, enable uh, Norman Guerra, our uh, CEO of the Hudson County Improvement Authority. He's on, and I think I, I asked him to raise his hand also. Sorry, what was the name? Norman Guerra. He just raised his hand, I believe. Yeah, I just promoted him. Great. And then uh, another promotion, if you don't mind, Michael Cohen from PSNS, our engineer. And then Jeffrey Fleischer. I believe Jeffrey has logged in. He's our architect. Um, All right. I think, are there two Michael Cohens? I don't know. We'll take the chance. That that looks like him. There's He's one got his hand raised. Excellent. Seen. And you said Jeff? Yeah, Jeff Fleischer. So thank you very much. Um, as as the, the chairman has said, this is a uh, capital project referral uh, from the Hudson County Improvement Authority, the County of Hudson for a project in Lincoln Park. Uh, at the location of the uh, casino in the park. And uh, I, we have a PowerPoint, which Francesca is uh, able to share. And I'd just like to introduce Norman Guerra uh, to start the presentation. We know you have a very uh, full agenda, so we'll be as quick as we can and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Council. Norman? So chairman, as is typical uh, of our board, we can mark the entire PowerPoint as A1 for the record. And uh, it can be submitted and left on file. Okay, uh, thank you, council. That's great. And uh, I'm, I, I'm not sure if Norman's having difficulty um, getting on, on audio. So 
How about now, Michael? You there you are, it? Norman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Not a problem. Uh, no, Norman, okay. This is our fifth Stop Zoom call today with Norman. Yeah. So. <laughs> you think I would know this by now. Norman. First of all, I'd like to first. Just Norman, first one all, moment before to, you get started. Um, yes. Are you able to turn on your video or no? Uh, I add it on. Let's see. There we go. I see How about now? now? There you I'm, go. We got there it. we go. I just want to swear you Thank in, you, all right? Guys. Sure. Do you swear any testimony you get tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Norman. Last name is Guerra. G-U-E-R-R-A. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Hudson County Improvement Authority. Okay. And Council, um, are we qualifying your witness as an expert? I don't believe so. I, I, and, and again, uh, it's up to your council if, uh, how, how we want to qualify people. I know this is a, a Section 31 review, so um, Norman's not an expert, but he is certainly a representative of the Improvement Authority and essentially uh, uh, the responsible party for the project. Thank you, Kirk. Okay. Not an expert. He is the executive director of the Improvement Authority. It is a Section 31 to the extent that he's going to provide any necessary expert testimony in a field. We can recognize it at that time. Thank you. Okay. Again, I'd like to thank the planning board for giving us the opportunity tonight to present the project. Um, as you know, Hudson County has designated the Hudson County Improvement Authority with the task of replacing the former facility known as the Casino in the Park. The proposed facility is to be constructed on the site of the former catering facility. Uh, the authority through a public process selected landmark hospitality to operate and construct the facility. Um, with us on our team tonight is Michael Cohen, He's the authority's consulting engineers and program manager for this project, who will provide a overview of the project. So I'd just like to turn that over to Michael Cohen now. And, and Mr. Chairman and Council, we are offering Michael uh, for his expert testimony. He's a licensed uh, professional engineer and Michael can, uh, I believe Michael's testified before the Jersey City Planning Board uh, previously. Sure, let's just get them sworn in and then we'll uh, we'll qualify him. How's it going, Michael? You hear me? You're currently muted. How about now? Perfect, thank you. I'm just going to swear you in, all right? Good thing. Can you raise your right hand? Do you swear any testimony you get tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Michael Cohen. It's C O H E N. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Cohen, good evening. Uh, yeah, you've, you've testified before us before. Your license is current tonight? It is, yes, sir. Okay, you're qualified. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Norman, and thank you, uh, everybody, and good evening. Um, I'm just going to walk you through kind of a brief overview of the project, uh, kind of high level, and uh, then I'm going to turn it over to the project architect who will give you a little more detail on the actual facility. As uh, Mr. Guerra mentioned, the Improvement Authority is the, uh, the authority that is over this project. And, and you see here just some of the folks that are involved, including Mass Construction is involved with this. PSNS is a firm I'm with. We're consulting engineers. And of course, the Hudson County Planning and Francesca are deeply involved in this. So this is kind of the county's team. And on the next slide, you'll see the operation and design team headed by Landmark Hospitality. Del Sano Contracting is going to be the contract on the project. Fleischer Architect is their architect and their civil engineer is uh, Burton Engineering. Moving ahead, general narrative of the project, as Norman mentioned, this is going to be a new facility that's going to replace that building that you've all seen for, depending on how old you are, many, many years. The, uh, the pre-existing building was there since the 30s and uh, hopefully this is going to do it proud, this replacement. It's, uh, it's going to be quite an interesting building. It's going to be a, a three-story facility, uh, which will actually have a smaller footprint than the previous building, which will allow us actually more space on the outside to do more things around the building and in conjunction with the park. 
As I mentioned, Landmark will be operating this facility. You, you probably know Landmark. They have two other very uh, famous or, or popular facilities in Jersey City, as well as six other beautiful facilities throughout New Jersey and one in New Hope, Pennsylvania. So they're experienced and very qualified operator. The building will have banquet halls on the first and second floor with kitchens and support space. And what we think will probably be the, the, the signature spot will be the third floor, which is partially enclosed and have a restaurant and a, uh, a ceremony space and an outdoor deck, which will include a bar and, and dining for the, for the restaurant. From that, I'm just going to give you a quick look at the front of the building, which give you an idea of what it's going to look like. And the architect will talk a little more about that. But it will, it does show you that there'll be balconies on both the second floor and the roof. And again, those are going to allow for quite nice views out over the lake, which is right in front of the building and the rest of the park. And to the left of this view, you see there's open space that we are going to use for outdoor patio and dining. And, and that'll be where park patrons will, will be uh, supplied. Uh, moving from here, I'm going to turn it over to the architect, Jeff Fleischer, who's going to walk you through each of the floor plans. Hi, Jeff. Okay, I'm just waiting. Okay. Sorry, Chris. That's all right. Did you want to do questions first before we swear in? Uh, no, let's swear in. All right, great. Jeff, I'm going to swear you in, all right? Okay. Do you swear in your testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Jeffrey Fleischer, F L E I S H E R. Thank you. Mr. Fleischer, good evening. Uh, are you a. Um, Licensed architect in the state of New Jersey? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Thank you. Um, we're currently looking at the first floor plan. Um, on the first floor, there'll be a banquet hall that will seat up to 190 people um, with uh, support space behind, uh, kitchen, bridal room. Um, there are three stairs, one ceremonial stair. And to the left, you can see the outdoor patio. Um, and then in the front of the building, there'll be a portico share entrance um, off of uh, Tennis Court Road. You can go to the second floor. On the second floor, we have a banquet hall that will has a capacity of 225 occupants, um, along with a balc second floor balcony and then in the rear, there'll be more support space, um, kitchen, another bridal suite. And then the penthouse level, we have a ceremonial space, which will also be a lounge when not in use for ceremonies, as well as restaurant space. Um, and then we have a, a large outdoor deck bar area, which will overlook the, the lake and the park. Um, and then there's a small kitchen in the back to support that third floor level. Um, there will be two elevators to that floor, one service elevator for the kitchen staff and then one elevator for the public. Um, the building itself, oh, that's the site. So the building itself will be made up of uh, laminated beam construction in the front. Uh, part of the uh, building and the rear part will be uh, steel, concrete, and masonry. Uh, this is this is Michael Cohen again. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up on the site. Um, on the previous slide, you you got a, a glimpse of the um, a view of the site as it exists today. Francesca, I don't know if you can go back one. There you go. Um, that is actually the site as it stands today. As you see, the, the old building's been uh, been raised, uh, the site's been leveled, and the pad is kind of ready for the new building. You can see how it sits off of Tennis Court Drive, the main road there. Over to the right, you can't quite see it, is the lake at Lincoln Park. So we, again, it'll have a great view of the lake. Behind it is Nunda Ave, which is the uh, adjacent neighborhood that, that fronts to uh, Communipaw. Um, and among other interesting things, you can see the site is we don't have to take down any trees. We don't have to really do any more clearing. I mean, with the building gone, with the old parking lot gone, the site is ready for the new facility. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to it getting there. 
So on the next slide, again, you'll see a little bit more about the site and how the building does sit relative to the road and how Jeff had mentioned that a road will come off a tennis court drive a port, to a port cochere where uh, patrons can be dropped off and picked up um, and, and enter directly into the building. There'll be a new parking lot. Uh, the whole roadway network around in and around the building will be redone and reconfigured to, to ease uh, traffic in the area to make it clearer. Um, we will have 46 spots directly on site. We will be improving the crosswalks and the pedestrian walkway, which will lead from Nanda around the parking lot to the front and over to, right to uh, Tennis Court Drive. So uh, a lot of attention is being paid to uh, pedestrian access and, and passage. Um, we will obviously be adding new lights uh, for safety. So the site will be well lit. Um, and on the next slide, I think you'll see really the, uh, one of the highlights, which is the landscaping. The, we are proposing quite extensive uh, landscaping for the facility. Almost 30% of the area to be disturbed is going to remain impervious and landscaped. Um, there'll be quite a few uh, new lawn trees and shrubs and uh, buffers to the neighborhood behind and really opening and welcoming to the lake in front. So uh, it really should sit, um, as I mentioned before, it's, it's a, actually a smaller footprint building. So it'll sit on the site, we think, nicer than the other one did and will present quite a nice uh, compliment to the park. And I think from here, I think Norman's gonna talk a little bit about the schedule. Yep, thank you, Michael. And uh, as Michael stated, the building was demoed, the completion of the demolition was back in April, 2020. Uh, commencement of the construction, we're hoping to have a shovel in the ground spring, this coming spring. Um, and the construction timeline is estimated to be anywhere between 12 to 14 months. So we're uh, anxious uh, to get this going. Uh, there's been a number of community meetings and we were hoping to be in the ground already and then COVID hit and that sort of set everything back. And uh, we're just trying to get back on course with this. And of course, I'd like to thank the planning board for your uh, 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 for the opportunity to present this to you this evening. Thank you, Mr. Ware. Um, the one question I have, and I, I assume I'll direct it to Mr. Fleischer, um, the trash enclosure, how is that screened? We lose him? All right. No, nope. I'm just unmuting. Sorry. Um, it's okay. It, yes, that, that'll have a fence enclosure around it. Um, I believe it's a board on board fence. Okay. Or something similar. Okay. Excellent. And if yeah, I may, this is Norman again. We'll be certain sure. that the, uh, the trash and the recyclables is properly managed. As you know, we're the entity that does the enforcement for all solid waste and the recycling in the county. So uh, we will definitely focus on that. Good. That's good to hear. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Anybody else? Any questions? I have a question for Michael Cohen. I think it's maybe... Uh... The in and out traffic on Tennis Court Drive over there is Tennis Court Drive. I was looking at the, trying to look at the arrows. Is that a two way lane? It, because it, it looks like it's the first lane closer to the building comes in and out. But how is that other lane crossed? Uh, you are, you, it actually is one way. The park was uh, reconfigured to one way traffic relatively okay. recently. So it, it is. Right in and right out. The only I, I say directly in and directly out. Right. So the back the back road that says Tennis Court Drive, and you have arrows going in both directions, in different directions. I mean, no. Well, that that's that, not that, the that's traffic. Old, hours. No, that's an old that's an old okay. overlay. It is well, that's one what way. I thought, I thought the park was all there's a it, one direction. One way. It is very good. Oh, okay, no, that's right. an old overlay. It's fine. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. And Eddie, I can speak from experience that uh, don't go the wrong way. <laughs> no, I know. I know the park has changed now. Yeah. I worked on a fountain, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Any questions? All right, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thank you, again. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is anybody here from the public that wants to comment? 
Anybody here from public, if you could raise your hand, if you'd like to comment on this application. I see one hand raised, I'm gonna allow them to. Sure. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine. Okay, so I'm from someone on the phone to speak. Yes, um, I'm on the phone to speak. Hi, how's it going? Uh, I need to swear you in, okay? Um, sure, sure, sure. Do you swear that any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, so help me God. And could you uh, just state and spell your name for me, please? Sure, my name is Jean Daly. Um, Jean is spelled J-E-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Daly is spelled D-A-L-Y. Thank you. Ms. Daly, good evening. Uh, this is Chairman Langston. We have five minutes for you. Oh, I don't need that, but thank you so much. No, okay, I, um, unfortunately, since I'm not on Zoom, I can't see what the actual architectural plans were. Um, I guess the one thing I was curious about, maybe something for the Hudson County official to think of in the future, is there anything to design that's going to you know, make it a, like a destination, like an architectural destination? I guess I've been following a lot of the mass timber trends, and I was just wondering if architecturally there's something profoundly unique about the structure that would in fact make it a destination versus just a banquet hall. And that's the only question I have. Thank you, Ms. Daly. Michael, I would leave Thank that you. to the architect. I think that he's yep. got an answer for that. Yep. Um, yes, I would like to think it's unique. Um, I believe it's one of the first timber frame commercial structures in Jersey City. Um, and it, it, Would that be considered a mass timber? Sorry. Yes. Um, it will be uh, glue laminated wood timbers, um, wood decking. Um, so yes, I would classify it as that. Oh, terrific. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Daly. Uh, Mr. Fleischer, is, it actually resembles, um, I think it's one of the owner's other properties. Uh, I think it's the stone house in Warren. I could be wrong. Yes, they, they did do a mass timber uh, project there. I wasn't the architect okay. on that project, but yes, they did. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, it looks, uh, looks similar, mm -hmm. which is good, which is a good thing. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have one more hand raised. Shine. Shia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm How's it going? I'm myself. Are you able to uh, turn good, your video on? Um, yes. Let me see. Start video. All right. I see you there now. Okay. I just want to swear you in, okay? Yep. You raise your right okay. hand. Okay. Hi. Uh, do you swear or affirm any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And if you could, uh, could you state and spell your name for me, please? My name is Shai Badansky, S-H-A-Y-A, -A, last name Badansky, B-O-D-A-N-S-K-Y. Thanks. Mr. Badansky, good Thanks. evening. Uh, we have five minutes for you. Okay, thank you very much. First, first of all, I want to thank uh, the board for everything you're doing. I just have a question. So maybe I missed in the beginning. I would like to know if there's going to be anything for the public in the park uh, with this, let's say if someone doesn't buy something from this place, um, seatings are something for the public. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Guerra, I assume yeah. you will. Or would you yeah, feel that? I'll touch it. I'll touch upon that. Uh, there is a patio area where it'll be there. will be some outdoor seating, and I'm going to refer to it as a uh, sort of a grab and go for those that don't want to go up into the restaurant or up onto the rooftop lounge. So that'll be there for park goers. In reference to the entire park, I, I can't answer for the parks department. I believe near one of the ball fields, they have a small uh, a, a vendor there selling hot dogs and what have you. But here, our intent is to uh, have something there with benches in a patio area for those that are just passing through the park, whether they're jogging or or after playing tennis, as you know, the tennis courts are right nearby. Uh, at least there'll be a place for them to go. 
Okay, and thank you very much. Uh, I just want to say I'm in support anything that we do um, building in our area, any developments, those kind of things. It helps with jobs, it helps with the people living there, it helps attract people. And I'm very in support that the, that the board should vote on it because I think it's a benefit, it's private and public benefit for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Badansky, we appreciate it. And uh, Mr. Guerra, if I could expand just for a second on that question, uh, the green space, all that passive green space, that's open to the public also, correct? That's, that's open to the public. Um, on the right-hand side, just outside the line, there's a, an area there right now that's all wide open to the public. I believe they have park benches there. And then again, okay. on to the left of the building is the area I was referring to. And this also complements the golf course, which we built uh, about five or six years ago. And it's very possible from the rooftop of this, you might have a nice view of the golf course too. So between the golf sure. course and a new project here, that's a, this will be a real asset to the park. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have anybody else from public that wants to comment? If you could, you could raise your hand if you'd wish to speak. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to speak. Here, seeing no more public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public's closed. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know whose this is. Matt, this is yours. Oh. Okay, so I'm covering for Matt. Um, and okay. basically with any section 31, we look to see how it comports with the master plan and the objectives that this application is satisfying are to maintain existing parks and recreation facilities, um, to upgrade all existing parks and recreation facilities. And specifically, we state in our master plan to maximize the utilization of Lincoln Park. So that one also is definitely getting hit here. So with that, um, planning staff supports this and has no further comments. Okay, thanks Cameron. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve case P20-0, uh, I'm sorry, P21-004 as presented to the board tonight. Second. Okay, we have a motion and seconded for approval. All right, Commissioner Gangadin. Hi, beautiful project. Looking forward to um, visiting as well and celebrating. Commissioner Horton. Hi, thanks for all the hard work, guys. It looks great. Dr. Desai. Doctor, Doctor, do we have you? You're muted. I'm muting it. Aye. Commissioner Takur. Aye. All right. Commissioner Torres. Yeah, it's um, the other facility was nice. It was long overdue for a new one, and um, he did a great job. He's going to really look good in that plan. Thank you. Thank you. So I vote on. Thank you. All right, Doctor Gonzalez. I agree with Commissioner Torres. I think uh, this is a great. Uh, project and it was a, and a great job guys really really good job i vote i all right and chairman langston yeah i agree with everybody else this is a really nice design um it's going to complement the park nice and um uh you know lincoln park is is really an underused <laughs> gem in the city I, I think it's an amazing park so i i think this does nothing but help that park so uh i gladly vote i all right, motion carries all in favor. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, everybody. so let's uh, okay. call case thank P20 you, dash. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Call case P20 083 uh, as a minor site plan for 308 Academy Street. And can people for this item please raise their hands? I see Mr. Joseph with his hand up. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Mr. Joseph. Glad to finally get to you. Yeah, so happy to, to 
be here. <laughs> um, so I have Mukti Bajaj this evening, and I have Carolyn Morstall. I see both of them. Okay, great. Um, Stephen Joseph, the applicant. Uh, Council, I'd like to confirm you have my notices, and they're acceptable. Good evening, Council. How are you? Uh, Council, I did not see. Did you send new notices? I have the old notice, which we did. We did send new notices over. All right. Just give me one. Sure. I could pull them up as well. Maybe I sent the, the older one to the list. The, yes, the I have it here. Okay, great. So I have a notice dated January 8th setting tonight as the hearing date. So uh, Chairman, I'm gonna receive the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application this evening at 308 Academy Street. All does appear to be in order. We can go ahead and mark those as A1 for the record. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Um, Stephen Joseph for the applicant. This is 308 Academy Street. It's located on the north side of Academy, near the corner of Academy um, and Ripon Streets. It's in zone eight of Journal Square 2060 redevelopment zone. The applicant's proposing a new four-story multifamily building with nine units, no parking spaces. In order to accomplish that, the applicant is requesting minor site plan approval um, and a collection of C variances, side yard setback, uh, maximum bulkhead height, maximum mechanical area. You, you'll see that they're, they're pretty minor, relatively de minimis. Um, the property is also demolished. We had obtained a, a letter from the historic officer, but it, the permit has been pulled. It has been demolished. So let's um, get Mukti sworn in and we can begin the presentation. I'm Mokdi, let me just swear you in, okay? Yeah. You're swearing your testimony you get tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Smukti Bajaj, M-U-K-T-I, B-A-J-A-J, Bajaj. Thank you. Ms. Bajaj, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you numerous times. Your license is current tonight? Yes, it is. Okay, you're qualified. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'll just go ahead and start sharing my screen. Uh, Everybody is able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, so this is, um, hello everyone, this is 308 Academy Street and the block is 12106 and the lot is 13. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in uh, the zoning data and the relevant information. So give me one second. Uh, so this particular property is in General Square Redevelopment Zone. This is in Zone 8, which is Bergen Square. And this, sorry about that. Uh, this is at the border of uh, Bergen Square Zone 8 and Zone 6. So this is the last property on Zone 8. Uh, this is on the north towards Van Ripen Street and is between Van Ripen and uh, Bergen Avenue. Uh, there's an existing three-story structure uh, which was a single family house abandoned, which was demolished recently, probably two, three weeks back. Um, and what we are proposing is a four story, nine unit building. Uh, the project does comply with all the yard and bulk requirements with the minor deviation requested. Uh, one of the deviation is for the side yard. Basically the side yard required is five feet and we are proposing 4.7. So this uh, deviation for two inches there and the other deviation is for the elevate, for the uh, bulk or the roof structure, which is permitted is 10 feet and we have little excess because of the elevator shaft. 
which is 13 feet. Um, the gross area, the, this is a little wider rod, uh, lot. It is 3,000 square feet, 30 by 100. Um, the gross area of the total proposed building, which is four story, is 6,800. I'm sorry. 6,803 square feet. Um, the each floor area is uh, the average of 1,700 square feet. Um, out of this nine units, four are studios and uh, five are one bedroom units. Let's just go to the site plan. So this shows the survey, which shows the existing three-story building, which we had proposed to demolish, and that has been demolished already. This is the proposed site plan. It basically shows a four-story building with the setback of three feet, one on one side on towards the north and uh, two feet on the right side of the building. The project does comply with the landscaping requirement of 60% in the front, so substantial landscaping has been given. We're also proposing one sweet tree. Uh, so each floor basically has two or three units, um, and also there's a cellar. Uh, so unit, or the first floor has two units. One is one, the front unit is a studio, and the back unit is one bedroom. The average square feet of uh, studios is ranged from uh, 350 to 400 square feet, and the bedroom, uh, one bedrooms are 540 to uh, 565 square feet. Uh, the, so the cellar has the mechanical and uh, nine bark, bike parking spaces. Also, there's a, there are a few lockers for, for the residential units, along with the garbage and recycle in the, in the cellar. Also, the uh, cellar has elevator access as well. And this shows the, the bike uh, parking detail over here. So these are the upper floors. Uh, second and third floor are the same uh, unit count, basically two or two one bedroom units. And the third floor is slightly different. And this we have a three units and there are three studios on the third floor. Also, there is a common rooftop deck which has X, uh, basically for the entire building. Um, with a small elevator lobby for the rooftop deck. The square foot area of the rooftop deck is 640 square feet. This is a proposed facade for the building. So we have used a traditional brick with just the accent uh, hardy panel system for second and third floor. And on the top, there's a balcony, which is the depth of the balcony is just three feet, um, just to create that XM feature. And um, so the red or the brick color is uh, brownish red brick, which is a similar tone here. And this shows the fiber cement panel, which is this portion of it. Um, regarding the rear and the side facades, they are you know, standard facades with the vinyl siding and on the upper level and the stucco on the first floor. So vinyl siding will be a light gray color and the stucco also will be of a lighter tone, light, light gray. I think that pretty much concludes my testimony. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bajaj. Um, the only questions I have, um, I'm going to refer to the elevator bulkhead there. Um, what's your material on the elevator bulkhead? We have proposed stucco on the elevator bulkhead. I'll just show it to you on the facade. So the the roof deck or the enclosure is having a siding, but on the elevator stucco, the elevator excess is a, is a stucco finish with a lighter tone. Light gray. Okay, so so that's not exposed cinder block. That's a stucco finish. Yeah. 
Um, and do you have a, a sight line drawing um, from the street? Is that elevator bulkhead visible? It is not visible. We don't have a sightline line drawing for this one because this was like almost in the middle of the building. So we have okay. to make sure that it won't be visible. So this is a small bulkhead over here. And okay, just the front, so this won't be visible. I'm not going to hold you to an exact number, but how far back do you think that is? That's about dead center of the building. Yeah, I will. I can show it to you on a floor plan. So this is um, 15 and 15, 30 feet away from the front of the building. Okay. Okay, that's it for me. Anybody else? Any questions? Yep. I have a question on the um, property line on the east side of the building, where all the windows are. Yeah. On the west side, you have no windows. On the east side, you have windows. You are not up against the property line, are you? No, we are not against the property line. On the east, we have two feet window, the two feet set back, and then no feet, okay. the east. Okay. And the west, there is, there is a three feet, one set back. That's the only area where we have the windows. So if somebody built up in that other property, it wouldn't be an issue? No, it won't be an issue. Anything else, Eddie? No, that'll be all. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions for Mr. Ms. Bajaj? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we, we do have a, a few variances associated with this application. So we have um, Caroline, our, our licensed principal planner, who's going to just give some testimony on those variances. Good evening. Hi, Caroline. Let me just swear you in, okay? Sure. You swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Sure. Carolyn Worstel, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, Worstel, W-O-R-S-T-E-L-L. Thank you. Ms. Worstel, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you in the past. Your license is current in New Jersey tonight? It is. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Great, thank you. Uh, Mukti, do you mind just keeping up the, uh, the drawings and maybe uh, zooming into the uh, site plan? Yeah. Uh, so good evening tonight, everyone. Um, as Stephen mentioned, we have a couple of variances. Um, three, uh, one is for that minimum side yard setback, the maximum rooftop structure height, and also for the uh, maximum mechanical area and other rooftop structures. Um, this property is located in that zone eight Bergen Square of the Journal Square 2060 redevelopment plan. Um, Speaking to those um, side yard setbacks, uh, Mukti, if you can just uh, zoom in just so we can see sort of the, um, yeah, perfect, and move up just a little bit. Um, so in, in a zone eight, um, the requirement is a minimum um, two yard, uh, two foot side yard setback to match a three foot side yard setback or vice versa, a three foot side yard setback to match a two foot side yard setback. Um, or to meet a minimum to meet a fire code or building code to accommodate adjacent windows. Um, in this case, um, on our east side, which is next to this existing three-story frame house, which is sort of uh, in that historic zone six, the existing building has that setback of two feet, nine inches, um, sort of at its closest point. So it's, it's just under a three foot, side yard on, on that um, building. We are providing a two foot side yard setback to match um, on that side. So in total, we are providing a four foot seven inch separation between the structures, which does meet that minimum fire um, code. Um, to the west, um, if Mukti, if you wanna, oh, okay, you can see it here. Um, there is an existing six inch side yard setback on that. Um, uh, of the existing building to the west of us. And we are providing a three feet, one inch minimum setback on our side of the property. Um, again, providing a minimum of a three feet, seven inch separation, which meets the fire code. Um, overall, um, our project is providing a total of five feet, one inch setback for the combined side yards. Um, 
which uh, will meet that fire and safety code while allowing for light and air and open space between the proposed building and the existing structures. Uh, moving over to that rooftop structure, uh, Mukti, again, if you just want to go over to that elevation. We are proposing a 13-foot elevator bulkhead um, where the maximum of 10 feet um, on buildings of up to 45 feet is permitted for rooftop structures. And this comes from the city's um, uh, uh, land development ordinance and is not um, from the um, redevelopment plan. Um, we are providing elevator service to um, the roof, um, ADA access to that common roof deck area. So that extra sort of three feet um, allows us to for that overhead mechanical system, um, which is typical standard uh, when uh, providing rooftop access. Um, it should be noticed, um, noted, in the code, the way it's written is for buildings under 45 feet, you get the 10 feet. We are um, just about three and a half, half feet uh, under that re that requirement. Um, whereas if we were at 45 feet, we would be permitted as of right a height of 20 feet um, for uh, rooftop structures. So um, while you know we're we're looking for the the variance um, for a slightly taller building. Um, you could have an extra, you know, 10 feet in height. Um, the other rooftop structures, including the two stairwells and um, the uh, elevator lobby do comply with that 10 feet. They have a maximum of 10 feet. Um, in addition, uh, this elevator um, uh, extra bulkhead is set back. Um, I believe it's about almost 28 feet um, and is not anticipated to be visible from uh, the front along Academy Street. So it really should not have um, an impact, a uh, visible impact uh, from the, the passerby. Um, the final variance we're looking at here um, is for rooftop coverage. Um, we are proposing um, a, a um, approximately 465 square feet of rooftop structures and mechanical areas, which is about 27.5% of the rooftop area, um, which exceeds that sort of maximum 20%. Um, here, you know, again, we're, we're providing two um, stair, head, uh, stair bulkheads, the elevator, um, as well as sort of the, the, um, the small elevator lobby, which provides some shelter when people are coming up to the roof from um, that elevator or from those rear stairs. There's a little bit of a shelter when they come up to that roof area. Um, as I stated, you know, the rooftop structures do comply uh, with and exceed the required rooftop setback requirements. Um, and we are proposing planter boxes on the front facade to further screen uh, that roof deck area. So. Um, overall, we're, we believe that the benefits of this project outweigh the detriments. Um, you know, we're moving, um, well, the, the building site itself is now um, vacant. Uh, there was originally a, you know, a dilapidated building there. Um, and we're replacing it with a new multifamily building that is consistent with that redevelopment plan. Um, and new street trees, permeable pavers, um, and just overall a, a much nicer looking um, building on the site. Uh, the project does promote several purposes of the municipal land use law. Um, purpose A, granting, uh, it, it will guide the appropriate uh, use and development of the property in a manner to promote the general welfare, the provision of an appropriate multifamily building consistent with the redevelopment plan meets purpose E, providing a density consistent with the goals and objectives of the redevelopment plan and promoting the establishment of appropriate population densities. Um, and Purpose I uh, with the replacement, uh, the development of this new uh, multifamily building with all of the extensive front yard landscaping uh, will improve the streetscape and really promotes a more desirable visual environment through creative development techniques. Um, in terms of the negative criteria, granting the request variances will not result in a substantial detriment to the general welfare. Um, its project is a uh, an appropriate infill development um, of the property and it will improve the streetscape. Um, we are providing 318 square feet of front yard landscaping, which meets the uh, minimum front yard landscaping requirement and will improve the streetscape with a new street tree and permeable uh, pavers. Um, 
In addition, that front yard landscaping will provide screening for additional privacy and security to those front uh, ground floor units. Um, and the building will meet, you know, all current fire and building codes, as well as providing adequate light, air, and open space to those adjacent properties. Uh, granting the deviation will not result in a substantial detriment to the zoning ordinance or the zone plan. Um, the project is uh, meets the requirements of the um, redevelopment plan is consistent with the existing and surrounding development found in Bergen Square in terms of the building footprint and massing, including heights and setbacks, which promote the purposes of zone eight. Um, we are proposing a compliant 17.5-foot uh, front yard setback to match the adjacent buildings. Um, and the rear yard setback, as well as compliant, and matches the adjacent uh, buildings with a 14.6-foot uh, uh, rear yard setback. Um, and overall, the, the proposed project advances the city uh, master plan, providing unique, attractive, and high-quality residential development. Um, and also advances several of the redevelopment plan objectives, including reducing auto meal, automobile dependency by encouraging high density development in close proximity to mass transit, removal of vacated, deteriorated, and obsolete structures, and maximizing use of rooftop space for recreation. Um, so in conclusion, um, the uh, project, the benefits of the project outweigh the detriments, and the variances can be granted in that both the positive and negative criteria have been met. Thank you, Ms. Wurstel. Um, just a quick question. I, I'm not sure if you mentioned it or not. That fire code uh, is 42 inches, if I'm correct. Fire code required is 37 inches. 37 inches. Okay. Okay. That's it for me. Anybody else? Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Wurstel. Thank you. Council, anything else? That's it. Um, that concludes our, our testimony. OK, thank you. Um, all right, at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody wants to comment, please raise your hand. If you are calling in, you can press star 9 to raise your hand. Mr. Chair, seeing anybody no from public. Seeing no public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, all right, Tim, do you want to wrap this up? Yeah, I'm happy to see this project move forward finally. Um, uh, planning feels that the uh, deviations requested are minimal and do not impact um, <clears throat> the uh, intent of the Zone 8 District, Bergen Square, and the General Square 26 Development Plan. Uh, and overall promotes um, the goals and principles of the uh, Jersey City Land Development Ordinance. Um, uh, planning approves uh, the development and uh, we can put it to a vote. Okay, thanks, Tim. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-083 as presented to the board. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Takor. Aye. Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Gangadin. Aye. Commissioner Horton. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Uh, yeah, I think the, the deviations, the case is there for them and they, the applicants made the case. Um, I agree and I'm gonna vote aye. All in favor, motion passes. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. You Joseph. All. Have a wonderful evening. You too. All right, let's call case P20-110. is a minor site plan with C variance for 95 Jefferson Avenue.
Mr. Height, where's Mr. Weinberg? Good question. He's here. I yeah. promoted him. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably just trying to get, get the video up and running. Council, you out there? You're muted, Council. Bring her back over. <laughs> you hear me now? Yep. No. We got okay. you, Council. Okay, thanks for your patience. You want me to start? Please, sure, please. Okay, this is, this is a, first thing is, um, I'd like to put into evidence the uh, proof of service of the notice and publication. That should be there. It is. Thank you, Council. Chairman, I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application this evening at 95 Jefferson here in the city. All does appear to be in order, and we can go ahead and mark that as A1 for the record. All right, thank okay, you. Thank you, Council. All right, this is an application at 95 Jefferson Avenue to put up a, uh, a two family home. It'll have uh, two large apartments, two parking spaces, a roof deck. And um, I have two witnesses tonight. One is uh, the architect, Raul Cabado, who testifies to the project itself and the plans. The other is uh, Charles Height, who is our planner, and he'll discuss the positive and negative criteria for the C variances. Um, I have a couple of uh, remarks before we start. One is that the uh, applicant has, has received a determination from historic uh, preservation that that does knocking down the building that's there was, it will not be a problem. It has no historic significance. Second thing is I, I spoke to uh, Paul Amatuzo. He's the president of the Pershing Field Neighborhood Association. I sent him the plans. He did a site drive by it. Look, looked at that, he spoke to the neighbor, and neither one of them had any uh, any uh, uh, questions or any objections to this application. So I'd like to call my first witness now, who is um, Raul Cabado, the architect. He's been before the board many times, and he's going to testify. Okay, thank you, Council. Oh, do you swear any testimony you're going to give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Raul Cabato, R-A-U-L-C-A-B-A-T-O. Thank you. Mr. Cabato, good evening. Um, yeah, we've qualified you numerous times. Your license is current tonight? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Uh, can everybody see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Um, the subject project is to demolish the existing two-story structure. Let me get a photograph here. Uh, and to construct a new um, two-family dwelling on a non-traditional size lot located in an R1 zoning district. The existing lot is 37.5 feet wide and 83.5 feet deep, having an area of about 3,131.25 square feet. Um, a determination was made by the Jersey City Historic Preservationist that the existing structure does not possess enough significant integrity to prevent its demolition. We are proposing a three-story, two-family dwelling with two parking garage, a 10-foot wide curb cut, driveway and garage door are also proposed. Um, one street tree is proposed um, on the north side of the sidewalk as shown on our zoning comparison chart. The proposed structure shall comply with most of the zoning block requirements. The proposed structure shall be about 34 feet, five inches in width and 54 feet, seven inches in length. The entire premises shall be over 5,700 square feet in area. This building footprint is provided, uh, this building footprint provided the maximum building coverage permitted for this lot. The proposed front yard shall be 6.5 feet deep. 
we are requesting one variance for a 24, 22 foot four inch rear yard. The proposed rear yard and front yard combined shall be 28 feet 10 inches, where 35 feet is required in the R1 zoning district. Sheet A101 shows the first and second floor layouts. The first floor shall be a garage for two cars and shall be lined with utility and storage closets. There shall be a recreation room in the rear, which is accessory to the dwelling unit above and is accessed by a, an accessory stair to the dwelling unit above. Oh, sorry. Um, sheet A102 shows the third floor. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Sheet 102 shows the third floor plan as well as the roof plan. Two dwelling units are proposed on the upper floors, one each on the second and third floors. Each unit shall typically have five bedrooms, five bathrooms with a balcony in the rear uh, off of each rear bedroom. On average, each unit shall be about 1,915 square feet. A roof deck is proposed. The third floor unit shall have exclusive use of the roof deck, which is over 800 square feet in area. There shall be green roof elements at the rear of the roof deck. The green roof elements consist of self-drained plant trays, uh, let's see here, of which we have a sample here. Um, uh, the green roof elements consist of self-drained plant trays. This particular system was selected for its ease of installation, reasonable cost, and easy maintenance. The modular nature of the system ensures that replacing parts become effortless. The benefits include stormwater management, reduction of the heat island effect, reduction of energy usage, noise reduction in addition to the visual and aesthetic benefits. Details of the green roof element can be found on sheet A103. In terms of materials, the front facade shall be clad primarily of brick of which we have a sample right here. There are also Oriel windows, which shall be clad in metal panels of which we have samples right here. All other elevations shall be clad in fiber cement siding, which we have sam samples right here. Um, the samples can be found on sheet A201. That concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cabato. Uh, anybody, any questions for Mr. Cabato? Yes, okay, thank you, sir. No, I do have a question for him. Oh, go ahead, Ed. I'm sorry. The uh, parking space for the two cars and the uh, garage. Yes, sir. Once again, we, uh, we see this. I'm hoping that that's for the same unit or are they for separate units. Uh, they are for separate units. It's one for, for each unit. So how do we get the first car out, the second car out if the first car is not home? This happens all the time. We, we assume our neighbors are going to be very friendly. We assume 10 years from now, 20 years from now, they're going to be good neighbors. And we're going to allow somebody else to take the keys and move somebody else's vehicle in the middle of the night. Um, uh, I don't yes. understand this concept at all. It's, um, it, it's, it's a concept that leads to trouble. I'm looking at a Mercedes Benz and a 16 year old that just got his license or 18 year old, 17 year old. And he's gonna take the keys of the Mercedes Benz and move it out of the garage. So he can move his father's car out of the garage and then put the Mercedes-Benz back inside. This concept is like very, very confusing to me. Um, yes, I do agree. In this particular uh, project, uh, Commissioner, there is possibility to have them uh, side by side. As you know, we're only allowed to have one uh, 10 foot garage door opening. So I say in this particular case, there is a potential to have it uh, reconfigured so that we have the, the car side by side and further in towards here so that they have the ability to maneuver out into that single garage door. 
Um, and I think we, we're, we, we would be able to do that only because this is a wider uh, lot and a wider building. Um, it's a little bit more difficult in the tradition, traditional 25 foot wide uh, lot in Jersey City. Yes, um, I agree. Uh, so as of right now, though, if we don't do that, though, they will be leaving the keys somewhere in the garage so somebody can move the car in case of an emergency. That's that, what the concept is. That is correct, sir. I, I don't understand this, and I hope one day that the uh, planning staff we we'll take a good look at this, and uh, we shouldn't even have these in our plants. Uh, this whole concept is, I know we want to get as many parking spaces and off the streets, but this concept right here, least, it's just a, a remedy for trouble. Um, but that's the only question I have, comment I have, the question I have on this. Uh, that's a good uh, Jim Langston, uh, I yield on this one. All right, thanks, Eddie. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, we've dealt with this <laughs> numerous times. Um, I, I certainly don't want to see the cars side by side because, you know, two cars quickly turns into four crammed in that garage if we go side by side on the cars. So I, I'd, I'd prefer to to keep them, you know, front to back, two cars, not going side by side, because I think, you know, any more space that opens up in there is going to be a problem. Uh, okay, anybody else, any questions? Uh, I have a question. Is there any space outside the garage door to park a car? Uh, no, ma'am, we have, we have a six foot setback from the front property line, so, and, and we're, and no, there's no parking in the front of the property. Okay. Thank you. I believe Thank I'm not, you, doctor. If I'm not incorrect, Dr. Desai. We can get permits to park in front of the uh, driveway. <laughs> you can actually. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Cabato. Thank you. Council, do you want to bring up Mr. Heiss? Yes. yes, I'd like to call Charles Hyde up. He's a planner. He's been before the board many times. He's going to testify as to the uh, positive and negative criteria for the C variance. Charles? Oh, um, do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. For the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Yes, Charles Hyde, last name spelled H E Y B T. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Height, good evening. We've qualified you as well. Your license is current? Still current, yes. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Appreciate that. Um, so I did just want to refer back to the plans really quickly because there's the frontage, front yard diagram that was prepared uh, by Mr. Cabato, and I just want to reference that. Um, first and foremost, um, we, we do have a wider width uh, of the property. Uh, but we all the properties along this block are actually uh, short in lot depth. So the requirement in the R1 is 100 feet. Uh, these all prop all of these properties are 83 feet uh, and, and a half, 83 and a half feet deep. So there is some essence of um, a hardship here in terms of not providing that 100 foot lot depth uh, that we're directly bumping up into with the rear yard setback variance. Um, the important uh, aspect here for the board is that the rear yard setback requirement is calculated on adding the proposed front yard and the, and the proposed rear yard. And the addition of both cannot be less than 35 feet. Um, so the first part is how do you establish the proposed front yard? Uh, what we did was took the predominant um, occurring setback along the block, which you see here, these six feet, two inch, six feet, two inch, that's the most predominant. And that's where we kind of located our new front yard proposed. And then the plans were designed. Um, 
and we are left with a proposed rear yard of approximately 28 feet. So the addition of those two, uh, 22 feet, sorry, the proposed rear yard is 20 feet, 22 feet. So the addition of those two is 28 feet, which is less than the 35 feet permitted. Um, but again, just to also reference that the, the development pattern here on these blocks, while, while most of these properties are all short in lot, lot depth, many of them um, come with a very uh, shallow rear yard. Um, these are, are less of a setback than what we're proposing. These are approximately um, 20 feet or less of a setback. We're proposing slightly larger than, than these homes existing in the back here. So that's just for, for comparison purposes. Um, so essentially we do have some somewhat of merit on the C1 test in that we're um, a, a, an unusually uh, narrow lot in terms of lot depth. Uh, also in terms of the benefit, um, we are trying to uh, propose two larger units. Um, the floor areas for each unit are about 1,900 square feet. Um, these are geared for family units, large family units. Um, and, and that I think is a benefit to help diversifying the housing stock. Um, this neighborhood's a little unique in the sense that across the street um, or really the, the path uh, cut runs underneath many of these homes in this neighborhood. And they're across the street immediately in front of this property is, is a, an exhaust vent. It's a very large um, concrete structure that appears to be one, two stories high. Um, and that really kind of dominates and disrupts some of the, the single family development pattern. Um, but the remainder of the neighborhood is still very much the R1 uh, residential neighborhood. So I think what's being proposed tonight is consistent with that. Um, Based on my review of the aerials and, and site visit, uh, a lot of the other development on this block uh, do have uh, longer buildings with shorter rear yard spaces. Um, so it's consistent with respect to that. Uh, and also part of this design, as Mr. Gabato mentioned, um, while we're, we're proposing a smaller rear yard space, we're also proposing the, the roof deck on the top, which will help increase that outdoor amenity space for future tenants. So there is some balance there into overall amenity space. Um, with respect to the negative criteria, um, again, we're proposing two family uh, units. Um, we are only requesting one, one variance. We do comply with all the other bulk requirements. Um, so I don't think there's any sort of substantial impairment to the zone plan or zoning ordinance. Uh, with respect to the general welfare, um, I, I, the, the board typically doesn't often see five bedroom, five bath units, um, but we did, I did ask um, and we did confirm that um, the, the, the applicant who's uh, proposing this development, uh, this will be their home and, and they, they do need that layout to accommodate their family. Um, and, and that's what's being proposed tonight. Um, and with respect to the parking, um, you know, the, I think if, if the planning staff did want to hone in on addressing the issue, it, it really is actually a requirement for parking for one and two family homes, if proposed, to be a minimum of 13 feet wide and 44 feet deep. Those dimensions basically create space for tandem parking. So it, it, it's very clear. Um, I did actually want to note on the plans, um, we reference maximum garage dimensions. It's actually a minimum requirement. That's, that's the minimum dimension, which we actually comply with. So we're 44 feet deep and much wider. Um, but you know, that's, I think, where you, where you want to hone in on the issue. Other than that, um, I don't see there's any sort of substantial impairment to, or detriment to the public welfare. With, uh, with the application and, and the variance being sought tonight. So that completes my testimony. Okay, thank you, Mr. Height. Uh, anybody, any questions? All right, thank you. I'm sure we'll see you again tonight. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, council, uh, anything else? Is that your presentation? No, that's, that's, that's the end of our presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Weinberg. Uh, at this time, we'll open it up for public comment. If anybody's here from the public that wants to comment, please raise your hand.
If you're calling in, press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody from the public? Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, Mallory, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, real quick, I just wanna share the staff report really quick. So this was on the data portal. Uh, sure. can, you, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna zoom in here. I, I'm satisfied with the um, testimony provided um, by both the planner and the architect, but I do just wanna kind of in um, talking about the negative criteria here. So this is an aerial in yellow. Here's our site that we're talking about right now. And this is that transit um, exhaust vault across the street. So you can see it's a really massive, massive structure. Um, it, it's somewhere about 15 to 20 feet in height. Um, and it, is, it takes up, you can see if you look at the buildings behind that are kind of faded out here. So it's about four lots um, width that this structure um, spans. So what I'd just like to, to acknowledge in, in the benefits of um, this property being redeveloped are the addition of the new street tree along with the um, green roof, which if, if you look at just the realities of what is exhausting out of this structure, I think anything we can do on this corridor in particular to improve air quality and to bring green elements to the street is critical. Um, in looking at this actual frontage of Jefferson Avenue, you'll see there's not a single um, street tree on this run. So we really need to um, concentrate in areas like this in, in developing a, a substantial tree canopy um, and also green elements within the buildings and properties themselves to kind of improve air quality and, and um, I mean, you know, we like those things in any application, but, uh, you know, when we're talking about a property across from the ball, I think it has um, a lot of merit as uh, positive criteria in considering the variance. Um, other than that, I shared this um, report with Mr. Weinberg. Um, we're proposing just standard conditions um, here, which are um, the street tree needs to comply with Jersey City forestry standards. Um, no changes of materials without um, discussion with staff and the board and an affidavit from the architect of record that the construction project is consistent with the final plans. Um, so with that, staff uh, recommends approval. Okay, thanks, Mallory. And Mr. Weinberg, do you have any problem complying? No, no, I, I reviewed the, uh, the staff recommendations and we accept them. And we'll okay, comply thank with you, them if we're approved. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-125 as presented to the board tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Okay, Dr. Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Gangadin? Aye. Commissioner Horton? Aye, uh, although I do agree with Commissioner Torres that uh, I don't think it's the best option for parking with a double garage, but I think our hands are a little tied in the situation. Um, the, you know, it's just a consideration for the future. Dr. Desai? Uh, I know that area so well and around that uh, New Jersey transit, there is a guy who always builds so much green vegetables around there. And I see the, all the houses, they have a lot of uh, greeneries over there. But you know, uh, I would say I for this. Commissioner Takor? Aye. Commissioner Torres? Um, I just don't um, agree with the tandem parking. I agree with the, what Mr. Hyatt said, that the minimum measurements of the garages and that is for the of the garage, that is not the issue. The issue is that they go to separate apartments, the units. What they need to do is just leave them for the one unit. Um, uh, if they agree and the people get along with each other and they want to rent out the space, that's up to them. But we uh, lead it to a area where it could cause problems. Problem for the city, cause problem for the police department. Um, and I don't agree with the tandem parking. So with, uh, I like the project and I love the rooftop. I'm going to have to vote no on this one. And Chairman Langston. Yeah, um, I, I think the, the case is there. 
for the um, I'm sorry, the cases there for the variances. Um, yeah, I know the block well, and um, I, I'm really excited to see, you know, five bedroom units. Uh, this is one of the great things about the Heights. It's you know the varied housing there is, you know, I love it. This is why I live here. So um, yeah, I'm gonna vote aye. This is a good project. Thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, that's six in favor, one opposed. Motion carries with conditions. Okay, Thanks. thank you. I'd like to, I'd right. like to, to uh, thank the board and the uh, planning department for all their help and consideration in this matter. It's really appreciated and makes it uh, much more pleasant to do to, to business with the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weinberg. Uh, okay, let's uh, move on to case P20-125 is a preliminary and final major site plan for 134 Newark Avenue. Mike, are you okay uh, with one more application before we Absolutely. get a break? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Should I go ahead? Yeah, you're here for a while, right? Yeah, yes, I am. Uh, just, you know, it, the screen keeps disappearing on me because um, it was joining That's me. That's okay. Pick me out. Um, That's okay. We got you. All right, good. Thank you. Um, my name is Joseph Cowda. I'm from the law firm of Schumann Handlin Margulies and I'm representing Ranny Management LLC tonight they seek preliminary and final site plan approval, basically renovate its property at 134 Newark Avenue. It's uh, block 14404, lot 21. Um, just before going any further, I'd like to confirm the board's jurisdiction. Um, just before the last meeting, I submitted the affidavit of proof of service with the certified mail receipts and then also an affidavit of publication from the Jersey Journal showing that notice was published on January 9th. And I believe that was the same day that the, the uh, notices were mailed out. So Thank you. I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication, proof of mailing with respect to the application at 134 uh, Newark Avenue here in the city of Jersey City. Mr. Chairman, I find that all is in order. We can mark those as A1 for purposes of the record. Council, is your entire team up on the screen? Uh, yes, I see Gerard Schubert is the architect and uh, it'll just be him tonight. As my understanding, there's no variances necessary. That is my understanding as well. Uh, Chairman, let's go ahead then have Mr. Schubert qualified and let's get his testimony started. Okay, thank you, Council. Hey, Gerard, I just need to swear you in, okay? Sure. You swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. For the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Uh, Gerard Schubert, uh, G-E-R-A-R-D, last name Schubert, S-C-H-U-B-E-R-T as in Thomas. Thank you. Mr. Schubert, good evening. Uh, is your license current in the state of New Jersey tonight? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Schubert. Um, can you share on the screen the site plans? Sure. Um, just, I, I wanted to uh, make the board aware that earlier today, um, we forwarded a, a different page A3 to the architectural plans that was just in light of planning staff's comments. And I forwarded Ms. Baptiste earlier. And... Okay, All right, so let's uh, do is we're go ahead, Council. What we're going to do is we're going to mark that new 
sheet as A2 for the record, but that is sheet A3, uh, and that's contained within the set that's up on the screen now, which is the full set? Correct. Correct. It's actually the last page of this set, and it was only, it was a slight change just to show the building materials. And Mr. Schubert, that has a revised date of today's date on it, or a couple of yes. days ago, for the case yes. may be? Yes, today's date is on the bottom. Okay, so last revised February 2nd. Correct. Thank you, sir. Okay. We'll mark that then as A2 for the record. But go ahead and take us through the submission. Sure. I'm just not loading. Um, well, there was a photo here, but no, it's not loading. Um, I think I have another one here. This is our building, uh, 134 Newark. Um, it's an existing building that we're leaving alone. The top four, uh, I'll just leave that photo on. The top four floors are vacant, completely vacant. Um, I think there's like one partition wall even hanging in there. Otherwise they're completely empty. On the bottom we have commercial space. Uh, the client would like to convert these top floor four units into eight residential units. Um, I go back to the ramp. So we have a basement, uh, first floor commercial space, and then typical floor layouts. This is the typical, this is the typical shape of the building. Um, what we're proposing to do is put eight residential units in. Uh, the basement will be used for storage and garbage collection and bike storage. We're going to add an elevator. Um, we also have a egress corridor to the back of the building. There's an easement agreement among other properties in order to provide two means of egress for this building. So we have our entrance off Newark Avenue and uh, as well as the exit for the uh, alleyway in the back here. Um, you have commercial space in the first floor, which is getting uh, adjusted in, in order to fit the new elevator and stairs and egress. Um, the upper floors, typical floor plate is uh, two units halfway down the middle here, uh, two bedroom, one bath. Um, and then also on the top, we're going to uh, locate a roof deck. The client wanted to do a roof deck. So we have a stair bulkhead as well as an elevated bulkhead. Um, that is the only exterior um, work that's being done to the building as far as modifications. Um, and that was the reason for the updated sheet, uh, because we needed materials for the, for these bulkheads. <coughs> um, this is the existing building, uh, the existing facade. Uh, it's on Newark at the pedestrian, uh, thoroughfare there. So there's no vehicle access to, this, uh, to the street. Um, unless the bollards are moved. Um, on the right side here, we can see where the additional bulkheads are going and uh, our materials. Um, since it's a roof deck, um, uh, the, the visible side of the roof deck would be a horizontal EPAY uh, rain screen system. Whereas on the left side, which is in the property line, I would do a, a cement, I'm proposing a cement stucco finish. Um, I know you're going to ask now before I even say, is the bulkhead viewable, visible from the street? Um, here is a street view. Um, this is our building here. This gray box in the back is the existing bulkhead for the building. There's a um, pop-up bulkhead for an elevator, a freight elevator that used to be there, but is no longer there. So that would be- Mr. Really Schubert, sorry to interrupt. I'm just not sure if that's popping up on the screen because I believe you showed me uh, couple of weeks ago, this picture. Are we just looking at page A3 now, or do you have a street view? Uh, do you have a street, you don't see uh, my um, photo, my screen now? With the uh, we see your screen, but it's the- um, The PDF? Yeah, I don't have, uh, I can't see what sheet number it is. Let me- uh, Councils. Picture is over the corner so, where the, the sheet number is. <laughs> A3? Yeah, yeah A3. That oh, great. There you this go. Is... We got it. Here we go. 
This is our building here. This is volume. Space, four floors. This gray box is an existing bulkhead on our building, um, which will be removed and replaced with a new elevator bulkhead. Um, and that part will be, you know, the top of it is going to be seen by from the street, <coughs> just like this is from this location. Um, Right, only over the two-story building, though. From Correct. This and that's one uh, small window. And then I went to the other side of the street. Here is it from the other side. Uh, that's our building there. And it's the bulkheads on the other side of the building, so it uh, shouldn't be seen at all. You so for see... purposes of the record, the photo that we're looking at now looks to be taken from the corner of Newark and Grove Street, looking back towards the subject property, which appears to be about four buildings in, uh, and the bulkhead is not visible from this vantage point. Again, on the corner of Newark and Grove, I guess that's the, is that the north side of the street? That is the uh, south side of the street. South Shrine. Yeah. Right, going the other way. Correct, looking northwest. And the ground floor tenant is HR Block, correct? correct. Just correct. to identify in the picture. Yeah, just see the building. Um, we're, um, Mr. Sherbert, if you could just point out the mechanicals and if that'll be, sure. if they're gonna be up on the roof, if they're gonna be screened, whatever the case may be. So uh, the mechanicals are in the back behind that bulkhead uh, that we saw. Um, it's just condensers for the air conditioning. Um, and that's the extent of the mechanical uh, bolt work. They're small, like, you know, not even three feet high. Um, I'm not showing any screening on the left side, but that can certainly be added easily enough. Yeah, is. Um... I mean, that'll be visible from neighboring buildings. So sure. yeah, maybe if we could get some screening along that side. Yep. Okay, anything else, Mr. Schubert? No, that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, the question you answered, that was gonna be my second question. Uh, my first question was, uh, the finish on the elevator bulkhead, you uh, said it's stucco. Is that a smooth finish stucco? Yes, just on the, on the okay. visible side. Yeah. Okay. And uh, council, I don't know if, um, you know, the applicants thought of this, but maybe you could have a conversation with uh, with the city mural program. That, that might be a great spot for a mural. It would be uh, much better to look at a mural than a, a gray stucco finish on the yes. roof. Um, that's it for me. I have no other questions. Uh, anybody, anything? Hello, Joe. Any questions? Anybody for Mr. Schubert? <sighs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Schubert. You're welcome. Thank you. Council, anything else from you? I have nothing further. Just to sum up that we're here to seek major site plan approval because we're over the 10,000 square foot threshold and we're not seeking any variances. And we're open to all the comments and we'll accept the comments and suggestions of the planning and we'll uh, discuss with the applicant about a mural on the bulkhead. Okay, okay. thank you, Council. Record screening those mechanicals on the roof and you will discuss the mural program with your client. Yes, I will. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, is anybody here from the public that wishes to comment? If you'd like to comment on this application, please raise your hand. We do have a call in. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Watch this. Mr. Salgian, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. 
And just to confirm, that's Jean Daly again, right? This is, yes, this is she. All right, and uh, just confirm for me that you understand you are still under oath? Correct. All right, thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Daly, once, once again, we have yes. five minutes for you and you're uh, sworn in and under oath already tonight. Correct. Um, I, again, I don't need five minutes, but thank you for your time. And I think actually the mural is a brilliant idea. Um, I, I'm not an architect, so I'm just going from what I, I saw on the plans. And the only reason I bring this up is because I rent in an old, old building that would not com comport to today's standards of habitable rooms, having windows, et cetera. Um, and from what I understand, quickly reading is that if the room doesn't have any window, there has to be a certain amount of lumens of light and certain amount of air circulation. So I don't know if any accommodations were made for that. Um, my one concern was also the stairway um, egress okay. two, in the sense that you have to go all the way down to the basement, then along a corridor, and then up back to that alley. And I wasn't sure if there if that alley was un unobstructed or does it go out to this, the back street? I guess that would be first street or something. Um, so my just concern was for those tenants because I'm in a similar situation. Um, and I guess the last thing really was how is the treatment of that middle window in the front going to be handled because you have um, a wall, a vertical wall splitting down that middle window. Um, and obviously I, I think because of the historic exterior, you can't really change the exterior, but how is that going to be, how is that intersection going to be made? The wall that is running uh, vertically down that middle window. Correct. That okay. Is thank you, Ms. Daly. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Schubert, do you want to uh, address that? Sure. Uh, the, let's start with the window. Yeah. Thanks for picking sure. up. Sure. Um, that will be adjusted um, in the final plan. Um, it was more to show an equal, equal, but yeah, we can move it off to left. We'll jog it so that uh, it's not bisecting the window. Um, regards to daylight, the daylight uh, the windows are on the bedrooms. Uh, there's there are yes, no, there's no windows in the middle, um, but we do have the adjusted um, the appropriate lumens, and we'll have the HVAC which serves the center areas, which would be the bathroom which doesn't necessarily need a window, it'll be vented. The fire, um, the hallway, uh, the common hallway, as well as the kitchens, but the bedrooms themselves will have all the natural light. Um, regarding the second means of egress, there is an easement agreement um, and we can provide if uh, you wanna see it, um, that guarantees an alley to a public right of way of sufficient width from the back of this building from that first floor all the way to um, to a public right away. Uh, so there's no way that that can ever be developed. There'll always be that, um, there will always be that egress, that, that means of egress uh, for this building. And it's there now, there's an existing door there now for the commercial space as their second means. So it's just, um, we just had to get a way, to, uh, needed a way to get the tenants to that door and uh, rather than go to cut to the commercial space, we cut to the basement. Okay, thank you, Mr. Schubert. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a common thing that we see with that, uh, that egress hallway. Um, could we, I don't know if planning has it or not, but um, does planning have a copy of the easement I don't believe that was filed with the submission. Okay. Um, you know what? I, I can't believe we haven't done this before. We should probably make this policy. If we're talking about the easement, um, let's make sure that, you know, we don't need it the night of the meeting, but let's make sure the planning staff has it and we'll mark it as an exhibit. And chairman, it should be included. Council, is it uh, in the chain of title recorded right in the deed? Is it a separate easement document? Do you know? We'll have to check on that because I'm. I just have the survey. I have it right in front of me. If, uh, okay. Me so it's identified on the survey. Well, here, wait. Uh, Mr. Schubert, do you want to bring it up? You said you have it in front sure, of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna share screen. I'm 
trying to find the. Can you see this? Yes, this we can. Is a resolution of the Board of Adjustment of the City of Jersey City for the Bay City Condo LLC. Yes. Okay. Uh, so this is actually, so when this address was developed, part of the um, resolution was egress. So if we um, scroll down here. Rear and side yard easements, number 10. For purposes of fire, you need emergency egress shall be granted to owners of adjacent property at 140 Newark um, and 229 Bay Street. Where does it say 142? Now go back and it says it'll be recorded in the Hudson County Registrar and the document shall be submitted yeah. to the Division of Planning. There you go. Do we know if that happened? Yes. Okay. I think we have, this is here, um, I just found it. All right, so I can see that it was in a resolution of the Board of Adjustment for a neighboring property owner and was supposed to be recorded and submitted to the city of plan, uh, the city planning division. We should have that on file, but it should also be filed in the county registrar's office. So chairman, to me, it should exist and it should be uh, both in our office and recorded at the registrar's office. And I am sure that it is in that Bay Street Board of Adjustment file. Uh, we probably should cross reference them with the properties they benefit uh, for purposes of, of our files if we don't, so. Okay, so do we wanna add that resolution as an exhibit? We're gonna mark we that as free for purposes of the record. And then council, I am gonna ask that uh, you follow up with a copy from the registrar's office showing that that deed was actually recorded in the registrar's office and to uh, follow up with planning to make sure that, that we do have it on file. It should have been done by the applicant on Bay Street before the board of adjustment. I don't know. When was that resolution? Ah, oh, Mr. Application, 2006? 2007, maybe. Uh, 2007, okay. Okay. So Mr. Harrington handled that application, which makes me feel really good that it was done. <laughs> But we can track it down, Chairman. It's it's not a problem. Obviously, we see Mr. Harrington regularly. I think he might be next. And uh, if for whatever reason it slipped through the cracks and didn't wind up at planning, we'll get it. Okay. And um, <coughs> Council, maybe we could, um, you know, we could have an answer on that before I or, you know, when I go into uh, to sign the uh, signature plans. Okay. Okay, so we are still in public comment. Uh, if anybody else wants to comment, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is officially closed. Uh, Erica, do you wanna wrap us up here? Uh, yeah, so I provided a staff report to the applicants team on January 28th, which they've already addressed some of the plans um, based on uh, some of my comments. Um, other than the standard uh, conditions that I made, um, uh, I would just include provide that the applicant also provides a copy of the easement agreement. We'll also check our records at, in the planning office, um, discuss having uh, a mural on the elevator bulkhead uh, with the applicant and also having some screening material for the mechanical equipment that's located on the roof. Okay, thanks, Erica. 
Uh, Council, you already talked about the screening and the mural. Uh, are you okay to comply with staff's report? Yes, yes we are. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-125 as presented to the board tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Vice Chairman Gonzalez? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Thakur? Aye. Commissioner Gangadin? Aye. Commissioner Horton? Aye. Uh, did Torres leave? Uh, his power went out for a second. Oh. He should be back in there. If he's not, we... Uh... Okay. Um, I'll just do Chairman Linkson. Okay. I'm an I. Okay. So motion carries. Hold on. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mike, do you want to take uh, 10 right now? I think now's a great time. Yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, let's take a 10-minute break, everybody. Uh, when we come back, we will uh, hear the review and discussion of the Jackson Hill redevelopment plan. Okay, uh, it's 7.22. We'll be back at 7.32. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we're just on a break, Eddie. Break. Yeah, we're on a break. Oh, okay. Ten minutes. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, um, I had a blackout. Yeah, Langston said so. All right, good. I'm back on. Okay, thank you. You're mm -hmm. welcome.
Okay, can we come to order again, everybody? Time is 7.32, and being a man of my word, I came back. Council, good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I'm just not getting it out of my headphones here. My wife's going to be angry about that. Um, no. All right, let's call the uh, review and discussion of uh, amendment to the Jackson Hill redevelopment plan. <clears throat> remap the plan to include the entire church and school lots of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, this was initiated by Sacred Heart Roman Catholic Church and the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Newark. Formal action may be taken. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Charles Harrington on behalf of the applicant. Um, yeah, and as what we are uh, here tonight for is to uh, try to fix a mapping error that um, we uh, believe that the entire Sacred Heart campus, including the the church and the school should have been included as part of the Jackson Hill redevelopment plan and its uh, uh, predecessor uh, redevelopment plan um, initially. Um, we, we think that because uh, we reviewed the prior blight study uh, for this area uh, and the prior block and lots uh, were, were, um, were reviewed and, and determined to be blighted. Uh, at that time, uh, it referenced the greater campus area. Uh, this is something that we had reviewed uh, with the planning staff as well, um, uh, because we we were kind of we were looking to see if there was something, a potential uh, uh, project or, or renovations of of the Sacred Heart campus. Uh, and at that time, what could we do to fix um, or bring this into the the redevelopment plan? because right now it's split zone between the Jackson Hill redevelopment plan and the R1 residential zone. So upon further investigation by, by uh, uh, the planning department and in our office, uh, it was our determination um, that we believe it was a mapping error. Um, and I, I do have, uh, I mean, I submitted uh, my letter in support of this and um, I did submit some maps. I, I think if I show you this, you kind of see, let me see if I can, um, share this one map. I don't know, what do I have to do? I'm a little, uh, this will be the first time I'm doing it. At the bottom of the screen, I said share screen. It should, I think it's the same. Or is that the top, the bottom share of the Share screen, okay. Mr. Harrington, if I understand what you're saying though, it's that there was a change in the block and lot designation and somehow it wasn't essentially picked up on the map itself. I think that, I think that was part of it. And then when you see, the, the blight study references the entire Sacred Heart campus. But when you look at the map in the Jackson Hill redevelopment plan, it just right. runs straight across um, along MLK. And what right. it does, it actually splits the church lot in half. Uh, so 
it really, you know, kind of, it shows that something went awry here. Um, and, and then when you do the, do the, the research and the due diligence, you see that the whole campus was, was referenced in the blight study. Uh, so we believe that the intent was to have the whole campus in there and that the map should be fixed to reflect that. And Mr. Harrington, did you review this with, with city planning and do they concur with, with what you're stating? Yes, we did. And I believe they, they do concur. That's, that's why we're here. Chairman, I don't know that we have to go much further than that, as much as I'd love to watch Mr. Harrington share his screen. Extensive delay with my computer uh, expertise. Um, I, I mean, you know, we've reviewed it. Um, I just think for public comment, we should actually, you know, have it. A, I have it on the screen real quick. I know it's a. It's a minor thing here, but. I can share it if needed. I have it open. <laughs> I'll do that. That would be great. How's that, how's that sound, <laughs> Council? <laughs> That'd be great. Big relief. Right. So that, I mean, this, this is kind of really what the, the crux of it that I wanted to show the board and anyone looking at it. You'll see that what I highlighted there uh, is the Sacred Heart Campus. And you'll see the, the dark line um, that cuts through from Bidwell Avenue to Bayview Avenue in the front on the, the western side of the campus. That cuts the, the campus uh, uh, in two parts. Uh, the smaller frontage, um, which is a school and a church is in the Jackson Hill redevelopment plan. And the back of that uh, is, which is also part of the church um, and the parking lot for the church is, is uh, within the R1 zone. So this whole area was discussed um, in the blight study, but when they mapped it, and I don't know if it was because the, the initial Monticello, not Monticello, it was the Martin Luther King uh, drive redevelopment plan um, previously, um, this was the campus was not included. And then I think that just carried over into the Jackson Hill uh, redevelopment plan. So we're, we're seeking to fix that so that that entire highlighted a, uh, area would be part of the Jackson Hill yeah. redevelopment plan area. Okay, and none of the properties behind it, correct? Just the highlighted area? Just the highlighted, they're, they're only the properties that are uh, owned by uh, Sacred Heart and the Archdiocese of Newark. Okay. And those are the same block and lot numbers as the ones that are included, or are they separate block and lot numbers? I'm, I'm not sure I follow that. They're, they're that, separate. They're, I mean, what you're looking at there are a separate uh, lots within the same. Okay. Time. But those block okay. and lot were originally part of the designation study area. That, that's correct. And have they subsequently been changed the blocks and lots? They, they have, and that's that's in my uh, submittal letter. Right. To the planning, which it, it uh, identifies the prior designations and the current designations and, right. and uses within the campus. And Mr. Harrington, obviously, as you and I both see, uh, when they when they start changing the block and lot designations these kinds of things happen because they they just change the block and lot designation on the maps and somehow it doesn't carry over and then that mistake is repeated for the next 10 years or whatever. That's that's right. And I think there, yeah, there was some kind of mix up here along the line. Right. Okay. Uh, that's it, council. That's it, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, anybody, any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, is anybody here from the public that wants to comment? If you could, please raise your hand if you'd like to comment. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Mr. Chairman, seeing no public, I move to close the public. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Um, Erica, is this yours? I don't know whose this is. 
Yes, this one is mine. Um, as Chuck mentioned, um, he did meet with staff and we did discuss this and it does really just seem as if it is an error uh, to not include the entire property in the redevelopment plan. Uh, so this is something that staff supports. Okay, thank you, Erica. You're welcome. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Langston, just before we go to, uh, to a vote on the matter, um, that plan that we had up on the screen, the map, that was in the submittal. Uh, yeah. Who would be redrawing the map going forward so that we, we have the correct map on file? City planning will be responsible for that. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, make a motion uh, to accept and approve the review and discussion of amendment to the Jackson Hill Redevelopment Plan to remap the plan to include the entire church and school lots of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, it's initiated by Sacred Heart Roman Catholic Church uh, and forward to City Council with a favorable recommendation for formal adoption. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded for a favorable recommendation. Hey, uh, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gangadin. Aye. Commissioner DeCore. Aye. Commissioner Wharton. Aye. Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Uh, aye. Council, I, I apologize. I thought there was going to be a little more involved in this and uh, I really apologize. We should have gotten this in on last meeting. That's, that's okay. All right. Thank you. While we have you, uh, let's call case P20-114 is a preliminary and final major site plan with a C variance for 900 Bergen Avenue. Yes. So moving right along for the record, Charles Harrington on behalf of the applicant. Uh, there uh, were notices provided uh, in connection with this application. So I'd ask they be reviewed and marked into evidence. Thank you, Council. Mr. Chairman, I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application 900 Bergen uh, here in the city. The notice was made for the prior hearing on January 19th and was carried to tonight's hearing with no further notice requirement. All does appear to be in order, so we can go ahead and mark those as A1 for the record. Okay, thank you, Council. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for this uh, application, I will have um, three witnesses, but I, I believe the uh, project is pretty straightforward, so I don't believe it's lengthy, but um, this is uh, in the Journal Square redevelopment plan area. It's uh, actually in zone seven, which is the deco uh, zone. So it's uh, something that you, you don't really see much uh, before this board. A lot of it is, you know, right on the square, or closer to the square. Um, and you know, one of the uh, purposes of that, that zone is to preserve and retain the early 20th century facades. So as part of this project, you'll see that um, the existing building and facade stays, uh, and then you go vertical. That's consistent with the intent of this zone. Um, and this is a little unique in that it's a through lot in that there is a little dead end street behind it uh, called Dick Street. And um, so you'll, You'll see how, how they've um, we've worked that into the, the design with the retail in the front, and then you have your residential uh, in the rear. Um, so it is uh, proposed to be eight stories, 50 units with retail. Um, we are asking for one, uh, one uh, deviation here with regard to the height. We're not asking for uh, the height for additional stories. It's, it's, uh, it's really because of the, the overall construction which we'll, we'll address. Um, otherwise, we are we are conforming beyond that. So I have um, uh, Gabrielle Grinelli. I don't know if she's up here yet. She's out there, um, but I'm, oh, there she is. So I'm gonna ask Gabrielle is our civil um, engineer, and she's just gonna uh, present the the site so that the board is familiar with uh, with the project. And I also note that my client did meet with um, a lot of the, the community groups within the area. Um, so this has been vetted um, throughout the process. So okay. I'm going to hand it over. Uh, I just need to swear in before we get started, all right? Sure. Can you raise your right hand? 
Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. For the record, could you state and spell your name, please? My name is Gabrielle Gornelli, G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E, Gornelli, G-O-R-N-E-L-L-I. Thank you. And Ms. Gornelli, um, have we qualified you previously? I can't remember. Yes. Okay. And uh, is your license current tonight? Yes, it is. And it's in New Jersey, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're qualified. Okay. Okay. Based gonna... on that, Ms. Grinelli, if you could take it away and, and just uh, give a brief uh, overview of the site for the board. Sure. Let me just share my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, so um, this site, we're, we're 900 Bergen Avenue, um, block 10701, lot four. Um, we're, we're along Bergen Avenue. As Chuck mentioned, we are a through lot. Um, the street behind us is Dick Street, which is a dead end street. And the site is on Bergen Avenue between Academy Street and Newkirk Street. We're about a quarter mile um, from the Journal Square Path Station. Um, the lot itself is approximately 50 feet along Bergen Avenue by 150 feet. Um, and the existing property has um, a three-story commercial building on the site. Um, as Chuck mentioned, we're in the Journal Square um, 2060 redevelopment plan, zone seven, the deco zone, which encourages the main Maintaining of um, certain elements of the of the building, which the architects will get more into. Um, as Chuck mentioned, we generally comply with the with the redevelopment plan. Um, minor deviation, which again, will the architect and our planner will get into. Um, to go to the site plan itself, there really isn't much uh, from an engineering perspective. We only have about 50 feet of frontage along Bergen and along Dick in the back. Um, so uh, Dick Street, as um, Chuck mentioned, we're, we're utilizing this for, for our back of house loading. Uh, there's a residential lobby in the back and then there is uh, retail in, in the front in, um, which is encouraged by the plan. Um, we are proposing a new street light, which is in conformance with the Jersey City standard light, just the typical um, light that you see in this area. It's, it's along Bergen Avenue on both sides of our site. Um, and, and we're re, redoing the sidewalk. But, but other than that, it, it's mainly, you know, an architectural presentation. Um, we did get uh, comment letters from JCMUA and Jersey City Engineering, uh, which we've reviewed and we generally can comply with those comment letters and we'll work with the agencies to get those addressed. So okay. Awesome. Thank you, Ms. Gornelli. Uh, any questions, anybody? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Hey. And um, I'm gonna next uh, move on to our architect is uh, Vincent Marchetto, who this is, um, Vincent has worked on many projects here in Jersey City, but this is his first time testifying before this board. So um, we are going to qualify him as uh, he can tell you all about himself and uh, then we'll move on. <laughs> so, Vincent, you're muted right now. Can you hear me now? I can. All right. Vincent, can. I just need to swear you in, all right? Sure. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. For the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Yes. My name is Vincent Marchetto, V-I-N-C-E-N-T-M-A-R-C-H-E-T-T-O. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Marchetto. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Go ahead, counsel. I'm sorry. Well, this is uh, Mr. Marchetto's first appearance before the board, so I was going to ask him just to briefly give uh, his uh professional educational experience uh, and uh, state that you are a licensed architect in New Jersey and that it is in effect. Great. 
So I, I received a Bachelor of Architecture from Northeastern University in 2012. I received a Master of Architecture from the Technical University of Delft in the Netherlands in 2015. I have a valid New Jersey architecture license, which was effective of May 4th, 2020. Um, I'm a member of the American Institute of Architects, and I have six years of professional working experience at MHS Architects. And beyond that, I was a, board, a former board member of the Journal Square Community Association from 2017 to 2020. So I'm very familiar with the context in the neighborhood. Okay, thank you, Mr. Marchetto. You're qualified. And I, I think you've testified in front of us before just as a member of the public, that's all. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're qualified as an architect then. Great. Great. All right, Vincent, if uh, you could share your screen and, and walk uh, uh, the board through the proposal. Yes. All right. Can everyone see my screen? We can. Great. All right, so we might, maybe we can mark this as an exhibit, um, A1. This is a photograph. This would be A2. A2, excuse me. Um, this is a photograph looking north of Bergen Avenue at the site. At the end of Bergen Avenue, you'll see the Journal Square Transportation Center, the new Journal Square Towers. And as you come down here on Bergen Ave Avenue, you'll see this strip of beautiful Art Deco buildings that were built at the, in the 1920s. And you can see they have nice ornament on them. Um, they use materials such as limestone and, and other sort of detailing. And then our site is just still in the deco zone, which ends here. It's the last building down Bergen in the deco zone, but it's a little bit different than its neighbors. Uh, and that happens to be because this building was built in the 1930s. So in the roaring twenties, they used much more expensive building materials, but during the great depression, they built a more um, modest, modern deco building. And that's what we have here. And the intent of the plan is to preserve this facade and, and we're going to comply with that. And then on, on top of this building, you can set back 15 feet and build a new um, uh, building that goes up to eight stories. Um, and so, and, and that's really what the intent of the project is. So let me sh go to the plans here. Oh, let me just get into the cover sheet. All right, so here's my cover sheet. You can see Gavin mentioned before that we're a through lot fronting on Bergen and Dick. Um, and if you see here on the Bergen app, this is the Bergen app facade as you see today with all this signage and so forth. We're proposing to, what we're going to do is we're going to clean up this facade, preserve it using the existing materials, repoint the brick, remove some of this extraneous signage and pieces of old signs that have been removed. Um, and, on, and we're going to replace uh, some of the, win the, the windows to match the three paned nature of the original building. Um, so that will be a nice addition. And we're also going to upgrade the storefront um, for whoever the next tenant will be using um, new signage. Uh, so, and then on, up top, you, you're gonna have a, we're gonna use, it's gonna be a little bit more modern but at the same time, use some building em uh, elements that mimic or pick up on some of these Art Deco buildings that are adjacent to it. So you see the, you have these triangular window headers at the top as well as a cornice. So the top is required to be 75% glass and the bottom is masonry. So there's gonna be a nice differ difference between what's new and what's old. So let me just go down here. I'm gonna skip ahead. I'm gonna go right to the, uh, the ground floor plan. Um, on the ground floor, what we've done, being that was a through lot, we had the opportunity to move the lobby of the residential building over to Dick Street and let Bergen Avenue be primarily retail. So this would be nice and porous and public and the more quiet Dick Street, dead end street will be the retail entrance as well as for loading, move-ins and so and, and other and other things like that. So uh, I think this is a, a great way to organize the spaces to maximize the, 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 the public nature and quality of Bergen Avenue. Um, I'm gonna go down now. The building has an existing basement. 
So we're proposing to keep the basement. Um, um, and what you're gonna do, we're gonna put some mechanicals up here along Bergen Avenue where they'll connect uh, with the mechanicals in the street. There's gonna be some storage down here for the retail space so they can store some of, their, um, some of the goods and things down here. Uh, there's gonna be storage lockers as well as an amenity space for the residents of the building. All right, so let me move up to the typical residential floors. So let me just give you a quick statistics here. So in this building, we're gonna have 50 units. 45 of those units are gonna be one bedrooms and five are gonna be two bedrooms. So on the ground floor, we have these, uh, we, we have these longer studios which face Bergen Avenue on the, on the second and third level. And you're gonna see here, as you pop up at the fourth floor, these step back and that will give some relief from the new building behind the historic facade. And they'll have these two private terraces here. The building is single loaded. So to the south of us, we've faced the units in the interior of the building are facing south. And our neighbor to the south is in the historic preservation zone. And we did that, number one, to pick so that the units benefit from all the sunlight that comes from the north. And number two, we, we know that the views won't be blocked because the neighbor to the south is in a historic preservation zone. Um, and going up, this is units up going to the eighth floor. On the, on the roof, what we have here is an amenity space on the eastern portion of the building, which will have views of New York City. And then on the western part of the roof, what we've done is we placed uh, mechanicals. And we'll have a small little rooftop room here with elevator access. And then let me continue on now to the elevations. So here you can see an elevation of Bergen Avenue. You can see the existing condition uh, as it is now. Uh, and then what we're proposing, obviously you can see the, the big difference from the street will be this new box that gets put up on top of the existing facade, but set back. Um, let, me go. let me flip. On Dick Street, we're gonna do a, something sort of similar. We would like to keep the base in a masonry brick and then up above have metal panels. There wouldn't be a setback on Dick Street, but we wanted to keep that balance of having uh, masonry on the ground and metal and glass up above. So this is, you're looking at a side elevation. This is the south elevation. Uh, this is the elevation that has all the, uh, all the windows and this will face onto Bergen Square. So you can see that there. This is the north elevation. Um, our neighbor, a neighboring building will go here and that building is in the same deco zone. So they will also at some point be able to build up against our building. And this, this uh, stucco facade will be blocked. And then finally, uh, let me see. Yeah, right here we have the, a building section. I wanna use this as a way to talk about how we arrived at the building height. What really kind of sets the building height is, is, is the existing facade. Those windows have to line up with uh, our floors. Essentially, we couldn't put new floors in the middle of those windows. So what we've done is we've put the floor locations in the right location to match with the historic facade. And then up above that, we've used the minimum floor to ceiling height that's permitted in the plan. So we're not trying, we're not really asking for any height that, that we, we wouldn't need. Um, and that brings our complete building height total to 92 feet. I believe the permitted amount is 85 feet. So it's within the 10% that's permitted as a C variance. And let me continue here. So this is a blow up detail, just uh, showing um, the existing facade at grade, some notes about how it's going to be preserved. And then again, a blow up detail showing Dick Street and how that elevation at the ground level might look. And then finally a blow up elevation 
showing the, um, um, the tops of the building, both at Bergen Avenue and at Dick Street, um, and showing the difference in the, the metal panel coloring. And then finally, just come back here, pull you to here. And this is a rendering of what that structure would look like in its context. So you can see the um, historic facade is preserved. It's cleaned up. We were creating a new storefront and the new, new building up above is set back 15 feet from the front facade. And now before I just finish, I just wanna mention that in these last final days as we were tweaking the project, we, we, we made some very minor upgrades to the facade. I just wanted to put on the record um, and hopefully we could do that and then and, and finalize that as part of the resolution. Is that all right, Chuck? Yes. Okay. So let me just, I just, one exhibit here. What we'd like to do is when we're looking at this corner. Mr. Marchetto, is this a new detail? Yes. Yeah, so, so let's, let's mark go. this. Mr. Harrington, I'm up to A4. A4, I thought this was A3. Uh, A3, I'm sorry. A3. Okay. And these are a series of sheets, uh, Mr. Marchetto, right? Yes. So, so could you identify uh, the sheets that will be part of A3? Um, sure, it's going to be A6, um, A8, A11, and A13. Thank you. And Mr. Marchetto, do those have a revision date on them? They do. And if you could just give that to us for the record. The date is uh, January 29th of 2021. Thank you. So very quickly, we added some more detail to the top of the building, added a more decorative metal panel as part of the inset uh, of this building. We feel that uh, being in the art deco zone, we could, we could adding a little bit more decorative element to the facade would be a benefit. Also, we've noted that on the previous design, we showed a fabric awning above the storefront and we'd like to change that to a, a two foot projected canopy that has a little bit of art deco styling. And then let me show you on the side, on the side of the building, what we wanted to do was on these fiber cement panels, the jointing pattern, we wanted to, to, to change, to start to mimic that triangular tops that you'll find on the Bergen Avenue facade. So some of that, so instead of having just a blank panel, some, all this jointing starts to pick up on the Art Deco features of the building. And then these are just blow ups of those details. You can see on A11, you can see a blow up of where that canopy will be. Um, and then same here on A13, you can see a blow up of uh, so how some, the, the detail will be added to the top of this cornice. And I, they're just small details, but I think they'll make a big difference. And we just wanted to get them on the record. Thank you, uh, Vincent. And just for the record too, did, didn't you, you did present these to the local community groups, is that correct? That's correct. And um, who were they? We presented to the Hilltop Community Association, the Journal Square Community Association, and the Bergen Square Historical Society. And did you receive favorable comments? We did. Any, any questions for Mr. Marchetto? Um, yeah, I do have actually just, uh, well, I, I don't actually know if they're for Mr. Marchetto or, or you, Chuck. Um, are we going for a signage uh, approval tonight or is that, is that just for uh, you know, detail to show us? What's going to be there? I believe that's just a detail. If any any signage would be conforming, or we we have to come back uh, for a minor site plan for the signage. Okay. Okay. And is that awning conforming? Y yes. The the canopy. I'm sorry, canopy. Yes. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, that's that's it for me. I don't have any other questions. Uh, anybody else? Any questions? I do have a question. Go ahead, doctor. Uh, I want to know how to enter the residential area and the safety of uh, people going in there and what is the way to go to the residential area? Okay, great. Um, so let me just go to my, maybe, okay, if you look at my site plan that I have on my cover sheet, the building has two fronts. It fronts on Bergen Avenue and it fronts on this small dead end street behind, New, behind Bergen Avenue off of Newkirk called Dick Street. So the entrance to the residential area will be off of Dick Street as you're seeing right here, and then which allows Bergen Avenue to be an entrance for the retail. Mr. Harrington, I assume that on Dick Street we'll have the proper illumination for that entrance. Yeah, ab absolutely. So I, I've shown on my plan here some uh, light fixtures that you'll see and some lighting sprays. So the right. area in front of the uh, of our of our building will be illuminated properly. And how about the street lighting? Um, maybe Gabby, do you want to discuss the the street lighting? Sure. Yeah, we're not we're not proposing any any sh new street lights on on Dick Street. We are proposing one on Bergen Avenue, but. We, we can certainly look at the sidewalk on Dick Street and and confirm that, you know, the illumination levels are sufficient. And there is street lighting on Dick Street. Existing, Current. yeah. Yeah, and we understand that the, the concern through that, that of that question, uh, Dr. Desai, where uh, absolutely we wanna make sure that the lighting is adequate so that it's it's a safe passage to this to this uh, residential entrance uh, and that it's, it's not a dark alley. So that, that is definitely something that uh, the applicant will, will make sure is, is appropriate. Mr. Harrington, I do have a question uh, and, and it may be for Mr. Marchetto with respect to, I believe Mr. Marchetto indicated that uh, there was a presentation to the Historic Society there was some talk of, is, is this considered a historic building? I don't believe so. It's just, it, but it is like the, the, um, the zoning requires you to maintain this facade. Um, so that's not, there's no specific designation, um, but the purpose is to retain and preserve these facades as part of the development. Um, and I believe that, uh, you know, Vincent and the team went out um, to to present to them um, because of uh, the you know the issues related to keeping this facade and, and respecting it and how how to make it more prominent uh, during the construct the, the, the other the rest of the development. Now I understood that with respect to the buildings to uh, next to this property which have the beautiful Art Deco facade. What is this facade considered? I think Mr. Marchetto touched upon it is 1930. Yes. So this facade also characterize, is characterized in the zoning as an Art Deco facade mm -hmm. to be preserved. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. We, <laughs> we, we, initially, we initially thought the same, but that is what the zoning requires. Um, <laughs> but it's not. Yeah, it's not historically designated. So, uh, you know, we, we just followed the plan. <laughs> uh, Chairman, I don't know. I'll defer to you. If it was the, <laughs> the building next to it, yeah, I want to preserve that. If we could make this look like that, I'd, I'd be much happier. But what do I know? <laughs> uh, make, my client would be a lot happier, too. Uh, yeah, I, I wish that was the case here. <laughs> In all seriousness, Mr. Harrington, your client would want it to look like the Art Deco facade next to it? You mean to keep what you mean to, to maintain this this facade right here? The existing <laughs> to 
to make it look like the Art Deco building next to it. To me, the building next to it, and I just can't see what, what it says on it. I think the one further down, 24-hour fitness. That's an Art Deco building to me. Right. As a Those two okay. buildings. Yes, Mr. Marchetto. Yeah, my I think my client, if he if he had his choice, would prefer to replace the facade with with something, you know, more you know similar in design. But that's not what the zone provides for right now. Okay. Um, I mean, we we hear you, and then maybe yeah. we consider you know, prior to construction, maybe discuss that further with planning and, and come back to the board. But uh, at this point, this, you know, this is what we're proposing that's consistent with the plan. But um, that it, it's certainly something that I think my client will lead you know, tonight, depending on what happens with, to, uh, to review that further. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I know I'd be open to that discussion, but, um, you know, this is what's in front of us. <laughs> and I'm right. just an attorney, but to me, it's no brainer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. But uh, yet, yeah, council, let's uh, let's keep that conversation going if we could. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Anything for Mr. Marchetta? It was Commissioner Torres. It was. Um, I don't know if it's for um, Gabby. Mr. Marcello, um, the doctor brought up a good point at the rear of the building. Is that a two-way street back there, or is that just a one-way street, and is it a Y street? Because now trucks are going to pull up to the back of the building for drop-offs and deliveries and stuff like that. How wide is that street back there? So the right-of-way is 30 feet includes a 18 foot cartway and two six feet sidewalks. And being that it's dead end, there's very little traffic. So I think if uh, you know a truck wanted to pull to the end of the dead end street and unload into the building, it, it, it shouldn't encumber traffic. How do they get back out then? Do they, have, do they time? They, 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 they go reverse back out into I mean, depends on the truck. I think uh, you can make a K turn in some instances. In others, oh. you may have to back out. Oh, is it a one way street? Well, it's a two way street. Yeah, two way street. One way because it's a dead end. It, it is. It's a. Well, it's street. it's a one way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's wide enough for two cars to go by each other. Is or no? Barely. Yes. Yeah, right. Yes, right. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yes. yeah, I mean we're we're talking about an alley here, right? It's it's not a it's not a through street. You know, the reason why we did this is Bergen Avenue has a problem with double parking. It also has a problem with on trash collection days there's mountains of garbage and there's very narrow sidewalks on Bergen Avenue. So we thought anything we could do to alleviate that pressure on Bergen Avenue and have those services happen in the back on Dick Street would be better for Bergen Avenue and the community. So basically there's no no other car gonna be going down that street anyway, it's a, it's a dead end. Correct. So it's gonna be mostly just going for that building or to drop off to any other buildings that not even the ones up front have a different side entrance. Oh. That's right. That's right. Well, look, now that I'm looking at it now, that would be the only building there that has an entrance to it. Right. Because the, yeah, the other, build, go ahead, Chuck. The other buildings uh, front on on uh, Newkirk Street. Newkirk. Okay. Yeah. That's not bad. Though. That's not going to cause any problems. So, so I believe cars park there right now. I don't know if. That's so the parking regulations for that street, but cars do park there. So there are other cars that traverse that area. 
on Dick Street, you're saying, Commissioner? Correct. Yes, on Dick Street. Yeah. And but we're not we talking about we're not talking about vehicular access other than that loading dock and I guess uh, ride shares, right? Correct. Yeah, that's all I'm concerned about is where the drop off, the moving in, moving out uh, packages and stuff like that. So that my couple of concerns kind of follow Commissioner Torres about that. Specifically, trucks getting back there. Um, New Kirk in Dick Street is, I guess, particularly um, used frequently. However, New Kirk is used pretty frequently. I think I'd be concerned about trucks having to back up into New Kirk and, you know, potentially cause accidents or traffic jams or things of that nature. So I don't know if there's any way we can look at that to potentially alleviate that or perhaps restrict how large a truck can go down that alley to make any deliveries, et cetera. Um, my other concern is too, I don't know if it's necessarily Mr. Marchetto's concern or uh, who's, but the sidewalk by Dick Street is very dilapidated. So is there any plans to improve that sidewalk or you know, make any improvements in that area? We do show, this is Gabby, on the civil plan to uh, redo the sidewalk along the our building frontage. Okay, and then kind of a follow-up to that again, I don't think it's necessarily your concern. I believe if my memory serves me correct, on the corner of Dick Street in Newkirk, um, on the side where your building's located, there's either like a telephone pole or some kind of light fixture there. And the sidewalk is so narrow. I don't know if, you know, a wheelchair or a certain disability access could actually get all, you know, around that corner to the sidewalk. So I don't know if there's anything that needs to be done necessarily there. Again, I don't know if that's your issues necessarily, but I think it might be a concern for you if you have, you know, disabled residents or people that might need uh, ADA accommodations. We can look into that with uh, the engineering department. Um, when we're, we're doing site improvements. I'd appreciate that, thank you. Yeah, yeah, let's make sure that, you know, Dick Street is is up to code if we're gonna put a residential entrance back there. Yeah. Okay, uh, anything else for Mr. Morchetto? Okay, thank you, Mr. Morchetto, nice work. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I just want to follow up with uh, Mr. Height uh, to briefly address the, the height variance on the, on the record. Okay, and just for the record, Mr. Height has already been sworn in and is uh, qualified tonight and license, I'm assuming, is still current? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, hi, good evening again, commissioners. Um, we did review the plans in terms of the zoning conformity. Um, there are two items uh, that I did just want to discuss with the board. Um, one, um, we did pick up a um, deviation. It's really a technical deviation with respect to a step back. Um, the deco building, uh, believe it or not, does call for preserving uh, existing structures. There are only seven other seven total properties in this subdistrict of the redevelopment plan. So it's a very small little node, uh, if you will, um, of the general square redevelopment plan that does call for retaining um, the facades as well as the footprints of, of the building. Um, the yard requirements reference a 15 foot setback, front step back at the fifth story. So we incorporate this along Bergen Avenue. Charles, if I, I could just, sorry to interrupting, but I think I think you're uh, referring to the next application, the five-story building. Uh, this this is the eight-story building. It requires 15-foot front step back uh, along Bergen Avenue, not at the rear. Yeah. It, so the, I just wanted to clarify. Um, it, it speaks the the language of the redevelopment plan is a 15-foot front step back is required for any additions above the existing Art Deco building. So along Bergen it, Avenue. Yeah, it's it's just Bergen oh, Avenue. Correct. So just specifically, so so the nuance there is is that this is a through lot and it's only applicable for the front along Bergen. Thank you. Yes. Um, so then, in in specific, the the one variant deviation that we need uh, is with respect to total building height. Um, as was mentioned, we are maintaining the floor to ceilings of the existing structure. That adds um, several feet to the overall building height. Uh, there's a benefit to there. It helps us preserve the existing structure. 
um, and, and the existing facade with the, the alignment of the windows. Um, in terms of the remaining floor to ceilings, we do meet um, the code in terms of the minimum floor to ceiling. Um, the, the 11th floor is slightly larger, it's one foot larger, um, but it still complies with the total number of stories. The, 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 the eighth story is one foot larger at, at 11 feet, uh, eight inches, but it still complies with the, the eight stories permitted. Uh, so in essence, um, we're taking advantage of the permitted eight stories, providing the eighth story, requesting the additional relief of seven feet, um, and, and bringing this, this application to the board. So we, we do find that there's benefits in terms of, of increasing the building height, uh, maintaining the ground floor to ceiling heights of the existing structure, as well as proposing that, that additional uh, eight story um, that's permitted. Uh, those are the positive criteria. Uh, with respect to the negative criteria, um, there's no substantial detriment to the general welfare um, we're only requesting an addition of, uh, of seven feet above what's permitted. So along the streetscape, that, that impact is, is very marginal. Um, along uh, from, from areas surrounding, you might have a, a, a visual increase, um, but it, it won't be substantial. Um, the, the building has been designed um, with great care in terms of the aesthetics with the differentiation in, in facade and, and materials, both in the front and the rear, um, to help mitigate any sort of appearance for a taller building. Um, with respect to impairment of the zone plan or zoning ordinance, um, we comply with all of the requirements of the redevelopment plan. So um, we do need this one, one aspect uh, for, for a deviation. Um, so I don't think there's any sort of substantial impairment um, with respect to that. Sorry for the uh, mix up. I'm, I'm reading these redevelopment plans over and over again. So <laughs> I apologize for that. No worries, no worries. Um, okay, any questions for Mr. Height? Chairman, I hate to harp on it, but I just can't get it out of my head. Mr. Height, there are seven buildings under the plan that have to be preserved. Uh, so, so no, there are many other historic buildings in other districts that have to be preserved. There are only seven properties in this Art Deco sub-district that have right. to be preserved, yeah. And of those seven, is this the only one that is this version of Art Deco? Uh, I, I really would defer to um, Mr. Marchetto, but yes. based on my understanding, yes. Yes. And, and the language, just to be clear, it, it references the preservation of early 20th century structures. So given that this is 1930, it, it falls within that nuance. Uh, believe me, if it referenced 1920 buildings, we would be revising the facade as this is a 1930s era building, but it does reference that general time period. But what I can say is, as I said earlier, we're we're presenting what's what's permitted by the zoning, but um, we have heard the comments of the board, and we'll probably be taking a look at, at this again. Um, you know, depending on you know what happens tonight. Understood, Mr. Harrington. And that, that completes our presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody's here from the public that wants to comment, please raise your hand. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody from public? Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public. Mr. Chair, do you hear me? Yeah, we have the second. motion uh, and we have a second now. Okay, yeah. public is closed. Uh, Erica, do you have anything uh, you'd like to add? Yes, um, just based on some of the comments that were made about this style of Art Deco, uh, I would just like to say that um, this zone was um, created with a historic preservation officer um, that still works with Jersey City Planning. And yes, this is not um, the same Art Deco styles as some of the other buildings, but um, you know there are many different examples of this type of uh, structure that exists and um, 
I believe it was, I'm looking at an email and originally um, I met with Vincent Marchetto about this two years ago and um, emphasized the importance of preserving that facade and provided different historic photos and um, different information about this style and um, just the building in general after speaking with our historic preservation specialist, Maggie O'Neill, about this building. So um, since then, uh, you know, they've really incorporated a lot of the feedback that our office provided. And uh, again, it does really meet the intent of the zone um, and the variance that they're seeking is quite minor. Um, I provided a staff report to the applicant team. I believe I emailed this one today, um, but it's dated January 28th, 2021. Wait, is this the right one? Sorry. Maybe it's not dated that date, but I did send a staff <laughs> note. <laughs> it is dated January 28th. Okay. And it has many of the standard planning uh, board conditions within it. And I just want to see if uh, council accepts those conditions. Yes, they, they would be acceptable. Okay. And uh, I don't have any further comments. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-114 as presented to the board here tonight. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Okay, uh, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Dr. DeSalle. Aye. Commissioner Gangadan. Aye. Commissioner Thakur. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Horton. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Okay, motion carries all in favor. Okay, thank you, everybody. All right, let's call case P20-082 is a preliminary and final major site plan with C variants for 855 to 857 Bergen Avenue. Okay, thank you for the record, uh, Charles Harrington, on behalf of the applicant. Um, this uh, project is actually right down the street um, from the last project. So um, it's in the same neighborhood. Uh, I have the same team. Uh, with me, uh, there are devi uh, deviations requested, so I'd ask that the notice notices be marked into the record. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. Mr. Chairman, I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application. The property address is 855-857 Bergen here in the city. All does appear to be in order. Again, this was also noticed for the January 19th meeting and carried to tonight's meeting with no further notice requirement. And we can go ahead and mark those as A1 for the record. Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you. So um, this project uh, is a five-story project. It's uh, actually in zone eight. Uh, and this uh, doesn't necessarily require you to keep a building facade, but this is somewhat unique in that one of the existing buildings, when we uh, sought a determination of significance to demolish the building, um, Maggie O'Neill's con conclusion or decision was that we were uh, to, that we could not demolish the building, um, that it had um, historical resources. So we have incorporated that into uh, the design, um, which uh, leads to a shorter sidewalk in the front, which uh, Charles uh, Height will we'll speak to and we'll speak to during the presentation. Um, this also has that, that nuance uh, that Charles was referring to in the last application um, because this is also technically a through, light, through lot because it goes back to room court um, and Charles can address that. Uh, and it also has a slight height deviation similar to the, to the last project, which, um, but the height deviation is a C variance as we were be before this board. Um, so we have, um, again, you know, worked with planning and the community on this. And with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Gabrielle uh, first to get us familiar with the site and then take you through. Okay, thank you, council. And just for the record, Ms. Gornelli is uh, still under oath and she is still qualified. Thank, thank you. you. I'll share my screen. Can everyone see my my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. 
So as Chuck mentioned, um, this site, we're at 855 Bergen Avenue. We're just one block um, further away from the path station than our prior application. Um, we're on uh, Bergen Avenue between Academy Street and Room Street. Um, similar to our prior application, there this, we are a through lot with a street behind us. It's called Room Court. Um, it's it's not labeled on this this map I have here, but um, if I go over to the tax map here, you, you'll see that room uh, court. We are block uh, 12107, lots 25 and 26, um, approximately 50 feet by 175 feet. And there's an existing commercial building um, on the lot. As, as Chuck mentioned, we're in the Journal Square redevelopment area, zone eight, the Bergen Square area. Um, a few minor deviations, which Charles and Vince will get into in further detail. Um, the site plan, so we're, our plan is orientated um, with Bergen Avenue on the right, room court on the left. It's, it's similar in that the building takes up the majority of the lot, um, we have about 50 feet of frontage on Bergen Avenue. We're, we're planning to redo the sidewalk along Bergen Avenue um, and, and keep the existing street light there and, and the existing street tree in place. There is retail along Bergen Avenue um, in the front and, and um, loading in the back similar to our 900. Uh, Bergen Avenue application. This is a five-story building with 51 units. Um, we do have letters from engineering and MUA, um, pretty straightforward, and we will generally comply and work with those agencies to um, address their comments. And that's- I'll tell you. Okay, thank you. Anybody, any questions for Ms. Gornelli? Okay, thank you. Okay, then we're gonna uh, move right along to uh, Vincent Marchetto. To, uh, he's also the architect of record for this project and he can uh, walk you through the, the plan. And once again, just for the record, uh, Mr. Marchetto is still under oath tonight and he is qualified. Okay, hey, great. All right, so you're looking here at my cover sheet. As Gavin mentioned, this is, is actually very, very similar conditions to the previous project. It's a through lot. Um, it's in Bergen Square and, it, and it's 50 feet wide and it has a, and it's a long project. I believe it's 175 feet long. So one thing that was interesting about this project is along the 50 foot long front, we were, we're, we're, we're required to preserve this four-story facade, but this one-story building on this side can be demolished. And the, the zone allows for a five-story building with the fifth story being set back 10 feet from the front of the building. So what we're proposing is to maintain this facade here or preserve it so we'll repoint the brick, you know, fix any of the sandstone headers and lintels, clean up the corners and things like that. And then next to it, we'll do another 25 foot wide facade. This one using a different color as well as more modern um, uh, features as a way to differentiate the old and the new. So we'll have a new building with uh, these two facades. Um, so let me continue here. Let me go to now to the uh, ground floor. So here you look at the ground floor along Bergen Avenue, we're going to have our residential entrance, as well as a retail space of 1305 square feet. Also on the ground floor, we're going to have a three bedroom unit that's going to have uh, a, a little terrace 
in this courtyard space. Uh, there'll be some storage lockers, trash room, which will exit out onto Vroom Court and picked up on Vroom Street. Um, a little fitness space. And we're also going to have a, a large bike parking room that will be accessed off of Vroom Court. Vroom Court, I have a photo I can show in this application I will show you. It's very narrow. So it's, it's about 12, only 12 feet. If you look at this photograph, it looks just like a driveway in a parking lot, but it's technically a, a street. So as you can see, there's not really much width to use it for vehicular traffic, but we think that because this project, number one, parking's not permitted because it's, it's too narrow for parking. And number two, it, there's a wonderful bike lane along Bergen Avenue that was recently constructed. We think we could use room court as a way to facilitate bike parking. Um, so let me continue. To the basement. So if you look at the basement, the existing basement is underneath 855, that historic building that we're preserving the facade of. So we're going to save that uh, basement. We're going to bring down a stair and we're going to have the utilities, uh, the water room and the electric service room is going to all be uh, handled in the basement. So we could leave the facade along Bergen Avenue to be more porous retail lobby and so forth. So let me move up. This is a typical residential floor. Um, we're going to have some units face room court, some units are going to face Bergen Avenue, and some other units are going to face south on this, on this courtyard. Um, the building has 51 units. There's going to be 25 regular studios. There's going to be 12 alcove studios. There's going to be 12 one bedrooms, one two bedroom, and one three bedroom. Um, so let me continue. Well, let me just point out right here. You can see. Oh, let's see. You can see up here. This portion of the building at the at the the roof level steps back. So you'll have a terrace out here, another terrace on the top of the fifth floor with a, on the roof with an amenity space on the roof that kind of wraps around. So you have a, a seating area over here and then a front roof deck that fronts on Bergen Avenue here as well. Okay, so this is the elevation. You can see the existing condition here where we have that four-story building and the one-story building next to it. And here you can see we're going to preserve this four-story facade and put a new facade that will match the height and the cornice of that existing facade. It will come in here. And the, this portion of the building up above it will be set back 10 feet. This is a look at the uh, room court facade. And you can see it's much more basic because it's not going to be seen from any street. Same here. These are the side facades. The north elevation has no windows as the, built, the units are focused to the south. And then, yeah, you'll see the south. Street. This is the portion of the building that meets up with the existing building, our neighbor on Bergen Avenue. These are some blow up details to show how the, um, the ground floor and the upper levels will, will work on the elevation. The signage will, be, will come back in a separate application when we have a tenant and know what the final signage will look like. These are blow ups of the room court, uh, top and bottom of the elevation. And then you can see here in the building section, I'm going to explain that it's a similar condition from 900, where the existing facade sort of sets the floor to floor heights. When we have to, because you know the window locations are already set, so 
We're not asking for any additional height. Essentially, we're keeping the floor to ceiling heights low. So it, the variance really comes from trying to match the floor to floor heights with the existing historic facade that's there. Our overall proposed building height will be 59 feet. And I believe what's permitted is 54 feet. And yeah, and you can see also in this section how the building up above the, the four stories sets back 10 feet, and then it sets back another 21 feet over here to get to this amenity structure. So these, so it'll really from Bergen Avenue will feel mainly like a four story building as these upper stories and elements are set back from there. And then finally, I just have, again, these photographs, you can see Vroom Court, and you can also see this building from the side. So this element will be preserved and then a new building will come in and meet it here. And then there'll be a little piece on the top. One of the deviations in this area is required to have a 15 foot, let me go to my ground floor. This area of, of uh, Bergen Avenue is required to have 15 foot wide sidewalks. And due to the fact, the, the existing sidewalk is about nine foot 11. So we can't widen the sidewalk and preserve the facade at the same time. So in this case, we have a variance for sidewalk width because we're not permitted to demolish the existing facade. And then finally, let me just touch base, use this. We have one other variance and I'll use this. The, the zoning reads that above the fourth story at the fifth story, you need to have a 10 foot step back from the front of the building. And Bergen Avenue is clearly the main front of our building um, due to the fact that it's a main retail corridor. So we've provided that 10 foot step back at Bergen Avenue. Vroom Court on the other hand is not a real street, it's more of an alley. And even though it's still a considered technically a front, we haven't provide that 10 foot step back relief. Um, we feel that, uh, I, uh, Charles will elaborate on that case, but, 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 that's, but that's the cause of that variance. And that's really the end of my presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Marchetto. Um, if you could, could you show us, uh, maybe zoom in on a, uh, a studio with an alcove unit? Yeah. Here's an alcove studio. Here you have a space to have a home office, if you can see here. You come in, you have a little space for a home office, small kitchen uh, area, and then the bedroom is here in the front with the window. Okay, and how big is that office space? That's about six feet by eight feet. Okay. Yeah, just my concern was that, you know, that could be used in a, as an extra bedroom, but I don't think that's going to be possible. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Anybody, any questions for Mr. Marchetto? Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Okay, thank you, Vincent. Uh, so now we'll, we'll move right on to uh, Mr. Height again. And just for the record, once again, Mr. Height has been sworn and qualified already tonight. He's still under oath. Yes, thank you. Hi, uh, good evening, board members. Uh, I, I was getting ahead of myself um, in, the, in the prior application um, with this step back requirement. Uh, I, I think we covered it in terms of uh, where we do need the relief. It's only for this one story. 
Um, and it's really in that uh, secondary frontage uh, on, on Zoom Court, um, more or less the back of house. Uh, we did see on the plans the existing streetscape, uh, street view photo um, of, of that alleyway. Um, that property currently does function more or less as a, as a improved, improved surface parking area. Um, I think they hold some, some temporary events um, where they had in the past um, on that property, but um, there, there's plenty of light and air in terms of uh, separation from other existing buildings. Uh, and we are only um, requesting the relief on the fifth story. Um, the, the principal variance or deviation um, in the redevelopment plan that we are requesting is the building height variance. So similar to the last application, um, we are um, proposing a new structure on a portion of the property. Um, and really the intent is, Mr. Marchetto had uh, references to maintain the existing floor to ceiling heights, um, which are uh, larger than typical. Um, and the relief needed in this instance um, is only enough to realize that fifth story, which is permitted. Uh, so it, it doesn't raise to the level of um, uh, being greater than 10 feet or 10%. Um, it's, most, it's the minimum amount necessary to provide for that fifth story. Um, so there are benefits to providing additional um, future tenants and, and residences in the building. Uh, again, we are um, doing a substantial amount of improvements as a project as a whole. Um, just moving to the ground floor, uh, I don't know if we need to pull up the plans um, in reference to the uh, sidewalk widths, um, but th there's a nuance here in, in terms of that ground floor retail is required, uh, and where you are required, you have to um, provide for the uh, the minimum uh, sidewalk width as per the plan, so it's 15 feet. So we're essentially meeting the intent of providing that ground floor retail space along Bergen Avenue. Uh, you can see that um, on the right side of the plan. Um, we're also, as was mentioned, balancing the intent uh, with this application to preserve the historic structure and provide for uh, the infill um, uh, uh, residential facade on, on the other half. Uh, and, and in essence, that's competing the preservation of the facade, the footprints with providing a greater sidewalk. Um, in terms of the impact on, on this, this specific deviation, uh, all the other buildings along this section of Bergen maintain this setback. So there's, there's very little in terms of, of this being the pinch point along, along the streetscape here. So, um, I don't see there being any substantial detriment to pedestrians um, traveling along this section. Um, also, the added benefit is, is there is some back of house access for this property, which will take uh, some of the uh, demand for, for residences entering and exiting off, off the front and, and bring that, that traffic to the rear along Doom Court. Um, I those are the, the three deviations in terms of the positive criteria. Uh, in terms of the negative criteria, um, I don't think there's any sort of substantial impairment here. Um, we're meeting the intent of, of the district. Um, we're, we're going one step beyond, but also uh, really working with the historic uh, planning staff um, uh, and, and maintaining this, this facade um, for, for this area. Of, uh, of Bergen Square and in, in, um, in the general, general square redevelopment area. Um, with respect to any sort of substantial um, or detriment to the general welfare, again, the relief at the fifth store is modest. It's, it's only the minimum needed to realize a permitted fifth story. Um, the step back is only um, providing additional space to the units at that fifth story. Uh, and only occur, occurs on the, the uh, secondary frontage, if you will, on Broom Court. Um, we, we do comply with the required step back along Bergen Avenue. Um, and, and I think you, you heard my uh, testimony with respect to the adequacy of, of uh, the streetscape and, and the sidewalk width um, along Bergen Avenue. So um, that's really my testimony. In, in, in the grand scheme of things, we're realizing an appropriate population density purposely. Um, we're, we're infilling 
um, a portion of the property with a very compatible historic um, facade and also um, maintaining an existing historic facade, which is preserving historic research is at the purpose, Jay, of the municipal land use law. That's, that's really the application uh, for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I have no questions. Anybody else? Nope. Okay, thank you, Mr. Height. My pleasure, thank you. And that, that completes our presentation. Okay, thank you, Council. Uh, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If um, anyone would like to comment, please raise your hands. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody from public? Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, Erica, do you have anything to add? Um, I sent some standard uh, conditions to council on this application, but I would just say that um, I noticed Charles, you pointed out that some of the um, people could enter, I think you said, onto the side street, but from what I could read from the plans, it's only accessible, uh, you can only get direct access either to the trash room or to the fire, sta the staircase. The, the so, bicycle room is, is what I was referencing. Okay, I I can't tell that there's a door there. Okay. So what I maybe I can just clarify. Okay. We would like to have a uh, a sliding door in the bike room, which is depicted in the plan here, and that's mainly because, as you can imagine, handling a swing door with the bicycle is is cumbersome. So we wanted to have an automated swing uh, a sliding door which is in the plan as you come here so you could use a key fob to open that door and then move your bicycle into the building so that's yeah that's the access you're referring to right charles yes okay. okay thank you for clarifying that and excuse me if you stated that earlier i was doing a couple of different things no, it's um, good to confirm. <laughs> okay all right so then that's great um so uh chuck i sent you some standard conditions i just wanted to see if you have those yes. Are acceptable? Yes. yes, those would be acceptable. Okay. So beyond that, staff doesn't have any uh, additional comments on this uh, application. Okay. Thanks, Erica. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-082 as presented to the board here tonight. Second. Okay. Motion is made and seconded for approval. Okay. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez? Aye. Okay, uh, Commissioner Gingadin. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Horton. Aye. Commissioner Thakur. Aye. Dr. Desai. Aye. And Chairman Linkson. Aye. Uh, motion carries, all in favor. Thank okay, you. thank you everybody. Thank you. All thank right, you. let's, night, uh, you too. Uh, Mike, are you okay? Do you wanna take a break or are you, uh, you good to go? Um, I'm good. Yeah. If you want to just do one more. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do one more. Um, okay. Let's call case P20-171 uh, as an administrative amendment for 618 Pavonia Avenue. Okay. Uh, for the record, Charles Harrington on behalf of the applicant, uh, I did provide, uh, even though it's an administrative amendment, I did provide a uh, notice of, of the uh, requested amendments, but asked that they re reviewed and marked. Thank you, Council. I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the administrative amendment at 618 Pavonia Avenue here in the city. Again, this was another matter that was scheduled for January 19th and carried to this evening's meeting with no further notice requirement. Uh, all is in order. We can go ahead and mark those as A1. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council. Okay, so uh, this project um, is part of the Homestead Place Extension um, projects. Uh, the board approved uh, the project about a year ago. So uh, since that time, you know, similar to other larger projects, we've uh, they've looked at it and uh, are proposing some changes. Um, one of which is uh, they are going to remove the rooftop pool. Um, they're also removing um, the continuous building marquee. Uh, which will, you know, explain 
how that works uh, in the presentation. And then uh, some other uh, uh, amendments here are the result of the elimination of the basement uh, in the building. Um, we initially had, had a basement here. There's a lot of concerns about uh, rock uh, here. Uh, we've seen it, uh, my client's seen it in other, other projects in the area. Um, so we're eliminating the basement and what that does is it creates some, some other you know, domino effect changes here. So we're making some interior changes. Uh, wow. We also um, need to add a transform, an additional transformer room um, for the project. Mm -hmm. And you'll see too, then there are some ground floor facade changes uh, that we worked with planning on um, to uh, dress up uh, the area where the additional transformer room is. And we're actually turning the corner and uh, some of the uh, things that we're going to do here are provide for a mural on the transformer doors, kind of dress that up so it doesn't just look like a drab uh, side of the building, uh, and then continue uh, the elements around around the corner, which is consistent with the, the homestead uh, place extension uh, zoning. So uh, with that said, I have Paul Friedis uh, is here tonight, um, who can uh, walk you through uh, the, the changes. And I I think, I don't know if he's, oh, there, he's, he's up here. And Paul is, uh, was the architect of record for the initial approval as well, and is licensed uh, in New Jersey. And Paul, let me just swear you in, okay? You swear in testimony, you get tonight's gonna be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. For the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Paul, P-A-U-L, Freitas, F-R-E-I, T as in Thomas, A-S. Thank you. Mr. Freitas, good evening. Uh, yeah, we've qualified you previously. Your license is current tonight. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Thank you. Mr. Freitas, you, you heard me walk through the proposed changes here. If you could do, do a you know, similar walkthrough and identify it for the, for the board. Certainly. Um, so I guess the first thing that really kind of propagates most of these changes is that the seller is no longer in existence. And there were a number of uh, items within the cellar that uh, had to kind of get relocated, uh, specifically uh, utility spaces and some storage spaces. So um, what ends up happening is the cellar goes away and we have to kind of relocate those things. So um, we move some of the utilities and some of the storage areas to the second floor. Um, and of course, the, there was a vault uh, that was included on the first floor. So some of the retail also had to get relocated, um, not a, 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 the corner portion of the retail. Uh, is there any way for me to, oh, I can share my screen here. I'm going to share my screen. Yep. I think that'll be the most useful. So um, basically, I'll zoom in over here. Here's the first floor plan area. This is that utility section where the transformer vaults are going. And as Chuck had mentioned, these are the doors that service uh, service these transform these transformer vaults uh, for PSE and G. Um, they are, you know, it's going to be basically a, a wall of doors uh, with some louvers on top. Uh, and we are proposing a mural uh, to kind of make them uh, look a little more uh, in keeping with the neighborhood and just to kind of get rid of having it be such a, uh, you know, just a flat, flat uh, elevation there. Uh, we also uh, removed a lot of the marquee that was servicing uh, the homestead place uh, that was originally approved. Uh, we still kept it at the residential entry, but we fe felt that uh, having the marquee was kind of taking away some of the uh, sunlight in the area. So we wanted to kind of create a mar more open and a more daylight uh, driven space. Um, on the second floor, you'll notice that, again, we had some of those utilities that were situated in the cellar have been relocated, as well as the storage into uh, the second floor. And then the retail services basically kind of popped up to the third floor. In addition to, uh, in addition to those changes, on the roof, originally there was a pool proposed on the roof plan. Uh, that is no longer uh, the case. The pool has been removed uh, and now it's just a big open terrace for, for the residents to use. In addition to all of uh, these common points, we also did some minor revisions to uh, apartment types and layouts. All of the counts, all of the types, 
all have remained the same. It's just basically more uh, uh, interior design to kind of uh, improve the apartment layouts, but all the counts um, remain the same. And Paul, just going back to the ground floor, uh, if you could point out to the board where um, we previously had the retail that walked down into the basement and now that's being brought up to the ground level and now we yeah. have the retail right on Homestead as well. Right, so here's the retail section that was, this this room got considerably larger uh, once PSC and G, uh, uh, you know, they wanted a, an additional transformer. So we had to kind of co-op some of this space here. Um, so that's basically the location there. And on the other side of the building, though, along Pavonia. Yeah, uh, and then of course you have the, uh, you have a, uh, another uh, another service area right here no but this this area right here on the ground floor that that was open to below uh, previously correct that's correct yes now we're, we're we, with the removal of the basement we now have all this additional retail space at the ground level correct that's correct okay. and that's uh i mean that, that's pretty much it we did we did work with planning uh to to um you know provide decorative elements for the transformer uh, in that that uh, portion that fronts along homestead so those those are incorporated into the plans as well okay thank you council uh, anybody any questions yeah let me turn it over to you guys again I don't know if I can am I still sharing the screen? Yeah, we still see a screen. I apologize. One moment. That's Let's okay. See. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that completes our presentation. There it is. Okay. Thank you. So I don't hear any questions. Uh, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody's here from the public that wants to comment, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody from public? Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Um, Erica, this is yours also. Erica Show. Um, so yes, as Chuck mentioned, um, there was a lot of discussion with staff, uh, particularly about the transformers on Van Ripen Avenue and that just taking over that uh, facade. Um, so we have considered, yeah, doing a mural, doing something to sort of beautify those doors um, and uh, understanding, you know, ha not having the transformers in the sidewalk and then the whole thing about access. So um, uh, this is uh, something that um, I think will sort of help with um, having the the four doors there, which they have to have because I believe the building has over 600 units. So it's different from some of the other uh, projects. 432. Homestead Place Extension as far as the amount of units. Um, but uh, I provided a staff report, I know quite some months ago and this was originally scheduled, I think in October. And um, I believe some of those conditions still stand even though the uh, proposal has been revised since then. Um, and I don't have any additional comments on this proposal. And those conditions okay. are acceptable. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion at this time to approve case P20-171 as it was presented tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Okay, uh, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gingadin. Aye. Dr. Desai. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Horton. Aye. Commissioner Thakur. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Motion carries. All in favor. Okay. Thank you. Oh, nice. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank Did you. we skip Eddie? She's dead. Where are you? Oh, there you go. I apologize. Yeah. Commissioner Aye. Aye. <laughs> Okay. Now all in favor. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right, so uh, it's 9.05, everybody. Let's take a five-minute break, and uh, we'll call the SIPAV Gateway Redevelopment Plan when we come back. So we'll be back at 9.10.
Okay, could we come to new order again, everybody? All right, let's call the review and discussion of amendments to the SIP Gateway, I'm sorry, SIP Avenue Gateway redevelopment plan to allow for greater residential density on existing non-residential use land parcels. Formal action may be taken. Okay, um, there is an area in the SIP Avenue Gateway redevelopment plan that is part of residential zone B um, that has existing commercial and industrial uses taking place. And this idea to amend this plan originally was revolving around one particular parcel, but um, since city planning started to look at it, we decided that uh, uh, multiple parcels along the corner of SIP, Freeman, and Logan Avenues would benefit from a change of the density. And I'll share my screen to show you the proposed changes. Um, <clears throat> here's the land use regulations for the SIP Avenue uh, Gateway Redevelopment Plan showing residential A district, residential B district, which the area that we want to change that's basically a block that stretches along Logan and SIP avenues um, that has primarily R1 residential use. The thought behind this is that we didn't want to create a situation where it would be a fire sale of lots if we considered this for the entire district where a bunch of people could you know, sell their R1s and lump them together to get higher density in those areas, but that the only larger lots were on um, existing uh, industrial and commercial lots like the car wash at the corner and a couple of older buildings uh, along Logan. Um, so the change would allow for sites that have an existing non-residential use, the R1, 2, or 3 standard shall apply, except that the density will not be regulated by units per acre, but defined by a building envelope derived from the size and shape of the existing site. Minimum room and unit sizes are regulated by building code, and these, and thus the changes that would take place with this would have to be in compliance with Chapter 187 of the recently uh, passed uh, inclusionary zoning ordinance in the municipal code. And then uh, just moved houses of worship from here to here. So basically the density would fall under something similar to Journal Square. And uh, this would allow some of the uh, lots along the uh, that corner I spoke of to uh, redevelop um, and bring a uh, some much needed additional units to the area, especially, you know, um, consisting of uh, lower rents and with the inclusionary zoning ordinance included, it really will uh, allow for people to, um, allow for different residential uses to come into play that will um, uh, help, I think, the community as a whole. So that's the uh, extent of the changes. Uh Tim, how many lots are we talking about? Uh, approximately four, maybe five. Okay, and any idea, um, you know, how many units we're talking about creating and um, how many of those would well, end up being uh, affordable? We're figuring it's going to be, the R3 allows you to go up to eight stories, but under previous R3 density standards, you're really, you're really only getting with those lot sizes, which are still larger than the typical lots uh, on the block, um, maybe anywhere between eight and 16 units with the existing. So if you change the building footprint, I mean, if you change the, um, the density, you might allow more like, maybe like four or five units a floor 
you know, so you could really increase the uh, the number and then whatever may fall under, you know, then once you apply uh, the inclusionary zoning, that, that could be up to 20%. So, which I think the rents would not be as high in the first place. So I think it will even out rather well where it won't be such a, uh, it's not like somebody's going in and putting 700 units um, sure. downtown or something. So I think the, the costs, the cost and the benefit to the community will be much better. Uh, the cost will be lower and the benefit will be, will be higher. Okay, so we're, we're determining the amount of units by floor area and the, the okay. heights of the buildings? Yeah, we're not holding it to a strict FAR, but we're basically just going off of what has been the predominant um, uh, pattern of development in like Journal Square and stuff. And I'm not, we're not gonna, I mean, city planning would have more of a say as to what the unit sizes would be once an applicant would come in. You know, we're not gonna go and allow a bunch of, uh, necessarily a bunch of studios or micro units because then the numbers just get all out of scale. And then if and when this passes through uh, planning board tonight, then city council will have their own say on what kind of uh, values would be generated from this. Okay. All right, thanks, Tim. Uh, anybody, any questions? One quick question, Tim. How do Go we, ahead. let's say there's a dispute, let's say city planning says, based on the lot size, et cetera, you can have X units. And the developer comes back and says, no, I think by our analysis, we want Y units. How do they, you know, if there's no specific regulation of units per acre, et cetera, how does that dispute get resolved? Or who kind of mitigates, you know, who's right on that? Well, I think it would just go by the predominant, uh, the pre predominant development within the city. I mean, like, like I said before, like we're not going to allow for a bunch of micro units, even now, like when certain developers come in and ask for, uh, especially in Journal Square, they come in and ask for a lot of, uh, you know, high density buildings with many units. I mean, it just wouldn't be applicable in this situation and would have to City planning could say using best planning practices and say, this is, it's not considered like just a blanket as of right thing. Like we always have say in the square about the density, whether or not it's way over the line or not. And then ultimately it falls to the planning board to judge uh, based on their best reasoning, uh, given the uh, testimony that's given when the applicant comes before the board. Understood. I think my concern, I just don't want there to be you know, litigation or controversy where they're constantly saying that our analysis is different than planning board's analysis and it's kind of a back and forth and, you know, it keeps getting challenged by, you know, precedent in different, you know, I guess areas in the city where they, you know, say that is more indicative of Journal Square, that uh, is more indicative of the situation and try to disagree with you. I'm just I mean, to it's, sure certain, it's certainly possible, but I don't, I would not expect those challenges to hold up even if they were attempted. Okay. I, I just want to make sure it wasn't so ambiguous that it's going to create, you know, more of a headache for you guys. Um, and for yeah, us. that is true. But I mean, it, this is already something that's been established in the city. I don't see it being a uh, major issue, uh, especially given the, the climate of development these days. I think, you know, applicants will, will come forward with much more um, practical plans that have uh, modest or, you know, modest room sizes or unit sizes. Santo, do you concur with, uh, with what Tim says? on any litigation? Yeah, I think that, you know, what you have to remember is density isn't only controlled by units per acre. Uh, the rest mm -hmm. of the zoning helps to control and limit density, especially when you're talking about the R1, R2, R3 zones. Uh, so I don't, I don't see it as, as a problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else, any questions? <clears throat> All right, Tim, that wraps it up for you? Yes, it does. Okay, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. Uh, if anybody wants to comment on this application, I'm sorry, on this redevelopment <laughs> plan, please raise your hand if you are calling in. You can press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody from public? 
Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. And Tim, we uh, obviously have your recommendation already. Yes, you do. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'd like to, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, to stand to accept uh, and approve the review and discussion of amendments to the SIP Avenue Gateway Redevelopment Plan to allow for greater residential density on existing non-residential use land parcels and forward to City Council with a favorable recommendation for formal adoption. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded for approval. Vice Chairman Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Takor. Aye. Commissioner Horton. Uh, aye, and thank you, Tim, and the planning staff for putting it all together. Commissioner Ganganen. Aye. Dr. Desai. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Uh, did we get Eddie? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you. Uh, yeah, it's an eye for me. All in favor, motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's call case P20-090. Uh, is a minor subdivision, preliminary and final major site plan for 150 Room Street. They did not respond to me today and get back about uh, noticing. They said okay. they were planning on noticing for this, so maybe not. Chairman, for what it's worth, can we see uh, if Mr. Grant is in the audience? I didn't see him earlier, that's why I'm wondering. And also, Erica, while we're doing that, uh, did we have notices on 15 Park Lane South? That um, 15 Park Lane South has been carried to this next meeting. And they did not notice for tonight. They're going to re-notice for. Um, I, you know, I didn't see the. Oops, sorry, I muted myself. I did not see the notice um, okay. in the folder that um, planners are supposed to put their items in. So if it wasn't there, I did not receive it. Chuck has his hand raised. All right. Let's just talk to Mr. Harrington about that before we. Uh skip over it chairman okay well, we do sure. not see mr grant in the audience no uh this is a minor subdivision application this is uh, erica i'm sorry i just chimed in i i just want to know i know jim mccann's not on uh the meeting but i i had uh emailed him earlier uh, to ask if he was moving forward with this. And my understanding from his email that he was going to carry it with the preservation of notices. So I can't, I don't know, you know, uh, personally if the notices were provided, but Jim, I think Jim's expectation was that it was a preservation of notices. So I would assume that they were made. I'll see if I have that in my inbox, Matt. Forward. All right, Mr. Harrington, just give me one second. Let's address the other two things. Then uh, you can reach out and maybe you can reach out to uh, Mr. McCann in the meantime. I'll preserve the notice if he if he published it. I haven't seen it, so we'll I deal mean, with earlier, it. Santo, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. You guys did carry it with preservation and notice earlier in the meeting. I don't know if that makes any difference, but you already you said it at around 535. I'll text Jim and, and see if he can get, uh, if he has something he can send over to Erica. Yeah, I just want to make sure if he didn't notice that he knows he has to notice. And if he noticed, then he can get those in. And Got it. if they're in order, then it's a non-issue uh, for the next hearing date. Understood. And we will make that announcement, Mike. Uh, thank you for that. So thanks, Mike. Uh, Tim, going back to case P20-090, the 150 Vroom Street, we've now carried it, I think, twice. This would be the second time. But we still have not seen the notice? No, we have not. So, Chairman, I, I don't even know how to how to handle something like this where the attorney is, is not communicating I don't want to get caught with a situation of an automatic approval. 
Sure. So, well, that wouldn't be the situation because he's already received an incomplete letter and he's already been scheduled. So I can't imagine that happening. I mean, we could, if he's willing to notice for the next meeting, he would still be at the back of the queue. Yeah, so Chairman, I think what we need to do is we need to notify the applicant that his case will be dismissed without prejudice if he does not communicate with us as to what's going on. Uh, I don't think it's sure, we can't. fair for us to keep carrying it with him not communicating with us. Well, he did communicate well, the last time that he was going to notice for this date, but he did not notice for this date, nor did I receive any communications from him. So, uh, so in fairness, with the snowstorm and, and the fact that, you know, people have been having trouble, we'll carry it to the uh, next meeting date, which is the 17th? 16th. 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 So we can carry it to that meeting date. And if we don't get this squared away, then, then we can address it at that meeting. Uh, Hopefully he reaches out to us and he was having issues because of, of the snowstorm. I, I hope everything's all right. And it's, it's not something graver than that. Uh, so for purposes of the record and anybody from the public that's here, let's carry case P20-090 150 Room Street to a date certain of February 16th. There will be no further notice at this time, and it will be carried to February 16th, 2021. Okay, thank you, Council. Really quick, Steve. All right, so. No notice that we know of, so they would have to notice before the next meeting, I'm guessing? He may have noticed and hasn't sent it in, so. We're Someone carrying it with right. the preservation of the notice that he may have sent. And if it's all in order, since we've carried it now twice, it, it's acceptable notice, but we just haven't been provided that notice. If he hasn't noticed, then he's, he's going to have to notice for the 16th, which yeah. uh, would have to go out tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we do have Mr. Kelly's hand raised. Um, I don't know if he wants to shed some light on this or he's just raising his hand for. Who is Mr. Kelly? Another, uh, Mr. Kieran Kelly. Yeah, hello, sorry. I'm raising my hand for what I believe is the next application just so that Erica could see me. I Perfect. Okay. No, no worries. I, I appreciate your promptness. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's move on and- uh, Let's deal case with P20. this. Let's deal with 20-115. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Luck? Yeah, I, I just spoke with Jim. Um, he okay. said he absolutely noticed, but he did not um, get the affidavit of service into Matt Ward. Okay. So he said he can provide that uh, tomorrow uh, to, to Matt and Erica. All right, so he did notice for tonight he wants to carry it to the February 16th meeting with no further notice. He's going to preserve the notice that he did do. That's correct. So case P20-115 for 15 Park Lane South is being carried to the February 16th meeting. There will be no further notice of that application. This is your notice. So if you're here... For that application, it will be heard on the February 16th meeting. Okay. Thank you, Thank Council. You, well, All right. Let's move on to case P20-137. This is an administrative amendment for 333 Newark Avenue. Okay. Uh, for the record, is Charles Harrington on behalf of the applicant. Um, this, uh, this application... Um, is for administrative amendments to a project that uh, is actually under construction, close close to completion of construction. Uh, it's located right next to White Eagle Hall. Um, it's actually the same uh, developer um, and owner. Um, so we are asking uh, for 
a, uh, a few amendments, uh, a number of which deal with interior um, changes that, that are related to, the, to uh, an exterior change. Um, the primary one though is, uh, I believe it's uh, elimination of the P-tax in the building. Um, they, uh, Mr. Kelly will uh, uh, explain that, how they, they found a better um, system and they were able to eliminate uh, the P-tax from the facade. With that being said, they, this work has been completed. Um, it was done um, back last spring, I believe, uh, you know, during the whole COVID pandemic uh, beginning. Um, but we can, and uh, Mr. Kelly can confirm this, it's a better product, it's a more expensive product and it makes the building look better. Um, so with that said, I'm, I'm going to pass it off to, to Kiram so that he can um, walk you through that. Okay, Mr. thank you, Council. Before we do that, uh, I did receive notice for this case uh, under cover of letter January 25th, 2021. And that included the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application at 333 Newark mm -hmm. Avenue here in the city. All is in order and chairman, we can mark that day one for the record. Thank you, council. Hey, Gary, let me just swear you in, okay? Yes. You swearing the testimony you give tonight is gonna to be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. For the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Kieran Kelly, C-I-A-R-A-N-K-E-L-L-Y. Thank you. Mr. Kelly, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you in the past also. Your license is current tonight? It is. Okay, thank you, you're qualified. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so the, um, the amendments that uh, Mr. Harrington described are, are very minor, um, but um, actually probably imperceptible uh, in most cases from anyone on the street, with the one exception of the P-tax. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, so we can, this yeah. is uh, one of the sheets taken from the uh, submission drawings. The drawing on the, 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 the building is on a, on a through lot. We have a frontage on Newark Avenue and also a frontage on Fort Street. What you have on the screen is a comparison of the Newark Avenue facade. The version on the left is the approved version. The version on the right is the new version that we are seeking approval for tonight. You'll notice that the primary difference is that on the left-hand side, the lower panel of each of the upper level window units has a grill, uh, a grill that was incorporated into the window unit to conceal uh, kind of a wall mounted PTAC, an air conditioning unit. Now these uh, units are what we call efficiency units. There's six of them per floor for a total of 18, but in floor plan, and I'll, I'll quickly zoom up here so you, so you see, uh, over here on the right hand side is a typical floor plan. Um, the units are approximately on average between, you know, they're approximately 375 square feet. These two facing Newark are 360 square feet. So then being efficiency units, a PTAC unit actually has a depth of about 18 inches into the unit. Uh, and given that these are efficiency units, they're not the largest floor plans, uh, we had always felt that that was a considerable size. And we had looked for many, uh, not alternatives at the time, but we were looking for shallower PTAC units. Um, in the end, the solution uh, we found actually was a, was a better system. And that was a mini split, a, a wall mounted mini split system. Um, because while these units are small in plan, they are tall uh, in terms of the volume of the space. So by mounting the unit high on the wall, it didn't detract from the floor area. And of course, then it has the added benefit because you don't see these grills on the front facade. It's a much cleaner look. So the panels that once were grills are now glass matching the rest of the window unit. Uh, it's not a cheaper system. It's actually a more, much more expensive system. Um, but we felt that, um, that it, was, it was something that was, that was worth doing. So that change occurred on the Newark Avenue facade, as you see here, and also as I scroll down, this is the Fort Street facade. The, the same thing occurred where you had the grills integrated into the lower portions of the window units. On the right hand side, you see the new uh, proposed version with those eliminated. So that's, that's first and foremost, the main change that we are bringing to your attention. The other thing is that at the second floor of the building, uh, you'll see on my cursor here, uh, that was approved as a second floor office space, which it still remains. But since then, the interior layout of the office was determined. 
and there was two separate office spaces at the front of the building facing north. So where we had fixed panels previously, we, we have opted to incorporate operable casement windows for natural ventilation. Um, without knowing the interior layout previously, we assumed just an open plan office space with mechanical ventilation. Now we have provided accommodations for mechanical operation by the occupant of those uh, individual office spaces. Uh, on the Fort Street facade, we also simplified the windows at the second uh, floor level. On the left hand side, you'll see that we had double casement windows. And what we, what we, what we taught in hindsight was that uh, it was probably busier than what was needed. And so what we wanted to do, if you see on the right hand side here, we wanted to replicate the windows of above the same window pattern, just replicated on the second floor. So it's more consistent and more coherent in the overall composition. And then finally, the changes I'd like to bring to your attention is down at the street facade, uh, street level on Fort Street. Uh, previously on the left-hand side, you'll see that we had a wider glass lobby entrance. This is your main residential entry uh, to the building. Uh, and so we had storefront glazing at the lobby. Now inside in that space, previously we had a gas meter room, which was set in from the street by about six or seven feet or so. Uh, public service uh, during construction required that that meter room be brought to the exterior wall. So where we previously had a glass transom, it then had to become a solid section of wall. And so you'll notice that there is a bit more brick uh, and slightly less glass on the new revised uh, Fort Street facade. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, just two quick questions on the... PTAC units um, yeah. or the, the absence of the PTAC units for, I mean, this isn't a question, but you know, that's my pet peeve to begin with or PTAC units. I, I hate PTAC units. Um, so the new units, um, are they easier to service than a PTAC unit? Uh, I believe that they, well, they are and they are not. Uh, the difference is that whereas the PSAC unit is one unit sitting within a, you know, privately occupied residential unit, so you have to get access into the residence uh, space. Um, you still have that component, obviously, because you have a, a blower on the wall within the unit. Uh, but you now have a small condenser on the roof, which is common accessible area. Um, so from that point, I would say it's, it's, it's even. Uh, the PTAC units do have, uh, and certain ones of them do have a, the issue of condensation, which needs to be dealt mm -hmm. with. This unit does not have that issue. So from that respect, there's no real water collection or dam you know, moisture damage. So I would say that it's easier in terms of maintenance. Okay. And um, yeah, I didn't know the units went on the roof. So, so there's no venting that's, that's required out through the unit, it takes place, you know, through ductwork going to the roof? Correct. There's a refrigerant, a refrigerant line that connects the small condenser on the roof with the unit, the element in the, uh, in the unit. There's no ducting okay. out through an exterior wall. Okay, gotcha. No, that's great. All right, anybody else, any questions? Chairman, out of curiosity, how big is the condenser up on the roof? For those units uh so i don't have the spec available here but uh they they're they're small i believe they're about 13 inches wide by about 30 inches in length and they're they're, they're they sit vertically so in plan about 13 by 30 and i'll show you a roof plan there was always a separate area on the roof, which is fully concealed behind a parapet wall for the location of condensers and, and mechanicals. Uh, that hasn't changed, and they're located in this area, which is on the Fort Street side. Chairman, okay, we might so we don't need to the tech issue going forward. I might just <laughs> have to get Mr. Kelly's Mr. Kelly's information and have him come to every meeting from now on. <laughs> that's great so we don't need to talk about you know any additional screening on the roof correct no 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, council, anything else? No, nothing further. All right. Thank you. Uh, is anybody here from the public that wants to comment on this application? Uh, if you could, please raise your hand. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. I don't think I saw uh, maybe one call in. Um, okay, anybody from public, please raise your hand if you'd like to comment. Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, Cameron, anything to add? Uh, all right, just uh, that the applicant agree to all conditions that were part of the previously approved applications associated with P numbers P16-074 and P19-006. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you, Council. Mr. Chair, I'd like okay. to Okay, and with that, staff record, let's move on. Mr. Chair, okay. like thanks, Cameron. To approve case P20 137 as presented to the board. Seconded. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Okay, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gangadin. Aye. Commissioner Horton. Aye. Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Thakur. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Um, I just want to put something on the record um, real quickly. We, um, it's a better product. We said it costs us more money. Um, but that doesn't make a difference if it was a cheaper product and you installed it before you came to the board. Um, and your client is a very good developer in Jersey City. He's been good to Jersey City uh, and fair. Um, but he still should at least talk to the planning staff. I mean, I know we're going through a pandemic right now. That's understandable. But there's a lot of little things on it, stuff that has been done already. And now they're coming to us. And we've been taking a stand that that's unacceptable. Uh, and I think I want to take the same stand, even though the product is better. Okay? Just because the product is better doesn't mean it's okay. So, but with that, I, I like the changes. But at least if developers were just start talking to the planning staff at least or their council and, and get that part started before they come to us. Then we can see that they're trying. So with that, I'm going to vote I though. I like the product. Thank you. Okay, my internet like froze on me, of course, during the most important part. Torres, was that an I? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and Chairman Langston. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, Commissioner Torres. Um, you know, I always take the position that, you know, whether it's not that it doesn't matter to me, but, you know, considering an administrative amendment after something is built, the, the applicants roll in the dice there. Um, if, you know, if this wasn't a better product. Uh, the, the cost, of course, you know, means nothing to the planning board. Um, it, but if, if it didn't make it a better project, you know, we're having a much different conversation tonight. So, you know, luckily, this is a better product. I, I love the fact that we're losing PTAC units on this building. Um, so I'm going to vote aye, but, you know, cautiously on uh, on the fact that this is built already so thank you guys thank you understood thank you okay thanks council uh all right let's uh move on to 
Our last application tonight is case P19-177 is a minor subdivision. Uh, the address being 108 Hammerpo Avenue. Chairman, that's my, my doctor. So, I mean, you know, do I excuse myself? Yeah, sure, Harkesh. Uh, you want to recuse and, you know, this is our last one tonight. I don't know if you want to hang around and vote on memorialization of resolutions with us or, you know, call tonight. I'll call tonight. Okay, thank you. Thanks for stopping in. Enjoy. Stay safe. All right. So, uh, Peter Sassini. Hello. Oh, there he is. Nice. Good evening. Good evening, Council. Uh, Peter Cecchinini on behalf of the applicant. Um, I'd ask if we can move the proofs of uh, notice into evidence. Thank you, Council. Mr. Chairman, I am to receive the affidavit of publication, proof of mailing with respect to the application here this evening. It does appear to be in order. We can mark that as a one for the record. Okay, thank you, Council. Yes, this is a uh, conforming minor subdivision. It's a 50 by 113 lot. Um, no variances are being requested. Uh, the planning, uh, Mr. Black has approved of the project and some conditions. The applicant agrees to the conditions, one of which is that uh, in the future when two, two family houses are built there, they will share a shared driveway to avoid uh, taking up an extra on-street uh, parking space. Um, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't know if you need me to go further into it or if you have any questions. Um, I think we do have one thing to address. I think there's a tree that's going to be removed. Yes, we discussed that, uh, I believe, on Friday. Uh, in order to, in, there's the only options there are to leave that tree and then take, and then have two driveways and then take up an extra off street parking spot, or we remove the one tree, replant two trees a little bit uh, to the east, I believe. And, um, and that would basically create, it would leave one more space on the, on the, on the block for parking. So that, that was the option we went with. Okay, so the two trees that you're proposing are on the applicant's property or in uh, front of the property? Correct, the two that are existing there are on his property. He will take down one and put up two more also on his property. Okay, gotcha. So we're gaining a tree. We're, we're losing tree. one driveway. We're having a shared driveway. Win for everybody. I don't want to say that yet, but <laughs> it looks that way. Well, um, Cameron, I, you want to address something? Yeah, I mean, so on page three of three of the staff report, there's a visual which has some incredible graphics that I put on there. Um, <laughs> there, there is. <laughs> A, a red dotted circle around a red maple that is in subpar conditions. Honestly, um, in 10 years from now, the canopy maple to the west will likely outcompete the canopy for resources, sunlight, water, et cetera, on the red maple to the east, thus killing it. And the removal of that tree could really only benefit this project by having a shared driveway and then planting two new trees. So it's, it's just the best option. Okay. Thanks, Cameron. Uh, anybody, any questions? <clears throat> okay. Thank you, council. Let's, um, Open it up for public comment at this time. Um, if you'd like to comment, if you're a member of the public, I think we have one person that uh, just entered something in the chat. I think that's for another uh, application, uh, Chairman. Okay, so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna respond to them and tell them that it's not on for this meeting. Okay, yeah, I didn't read what they, uh, they wrote. The chat's not admissible for uh, the record. So anybody from public, if you'd like to comment, please raise your hand. I do see a hand raised. 
That's the same person with the chat, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, perhaps we should uh, entertain it only because it's a question about an application that I'm not sure was even on tonight's agenda, so. No. There's gonna be okay. a community meeting with Councilwoman Ridley about I'll that project. Out so we all know what we're talking about. Right. Alice. Hello? Hi, hi we got gotcha. you. Hi, this is Alice Frazier. I'm a resident of Danford Avenue. Actually, I was the one that spoke to um, Councilwoman Ridley this afternoon because she knew nothing about this um, project. Um, Ms. Frazier, just for the record, uh, the project that you are referring to, according to the information that you put into the chat, is 370-372 Princeton Avenue. Uh, Mr. Black, do we have a case number for that application? Is that an application that's coming before the board at will some in point? March. It will in March. I can get you that case number right now if you'd like. Let me well, we received this from Stephen Joseph, who was on the call tonight. He's one of the attorneys. He sent this to everyone in our res in our community that the tonight. Yeah. That the meeting was tonight, Ms. Frazier? Yeah, notice, notice of hearing, um, P20-072, Stephen Joseph Esquire, attorney for the applicant regarding 370-372 Princeton Avenue, Jersey City, New Jersey. This is part of the Chapel Avenue Industrial Park Redevelopment Zone. The I was notice Ms. Frazier, Ms. Frazier what I was properly. trying to... Ms. Frazier, this is Santo Alampi. I'm the board attorney. What mm -hmm. I was trying to articulate for you is that application, while it was noticed for tonight's meeting by Mr. Joseph, the application was not on tonight's agenda. So if you've been listening for the whole meeting, thinking we were going to hear that case, I will apologize to you because it was never on tonight. I do not know why he noticed for tonight's meeting. It was never on the agenda. So it will come before the board at a later meeting. Cameron, I want you to tell Mr. Joseph that he's going to have to notice for that meeting date. We are not carrying this because it was never listed for tonight. So Ms. That Frazier, you and correct. the other residents will get another notice. Yeah, Ms. Frazier, this is Chairman Langston. I I don't know what happened, to be honest. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that case was being noticed for tonight. It's certainly not on our application. And Mr. Joseph's name is not at the bottom of our agenda. It's my name. So, you know, that was never our intention to hear that case tonight. Uh, to be honest, I haven't had a chance to even look at it yet. Uh, we won't even address that for a few weeks. That, that, um, that's fine. Do we anticipate okay. receiving notice from? Who should we anticipate receiving notice from? We've made inquiries uh, around the property for a while now and haven't heard anything. So when we receive this, um, so Ms. Frazier, it is on the applicant and their attorney, Mr. Joseph, mm -hmm. to notice for the public hearings. However, they are not supposed to send the notice until the chairman tells them that their application is listed for a public hearing date. So it was sent prematurely and in error by the applicant and they will have to re-notice. So you should get that same notice with a new hearing date. And that in theory should be the date that this body says it will be heard. But I cannot tell you that what happened this evening will not happen again. So you may get another notice and it may not be on the agenda for that date. So my recommendation to you would be to check the planning website, the City of Jersey City's planning board website 
and see if that application is listed on the agenda for that meeting date. So that you don't sit through another one of these marathon meetings. It's not a problem. I'm very well invested in my community. I learned a lot this evening. It's not the first zoning board I've listened to. So I'm, I'm always I'm quite... welcome to attend. We're here every other Tuesday from yeah. five thirty till. I've said on many. So yeah. this is. I've said we have on Cameron many. or someone from planning post a link to where the agenda would be for them, because there might be multiple. Yeah, Cameron. There. Cameron, could you post uh, post a link to the website on the in the chat for Ms. Frazier? Definitely, and it's always on the home page of the city website. You can sure look at our and calendar, and all the links are there. And Ms. Frazier, you uh, you said that Councilwoman Ridley is involved. No, actually, I reached out to her today when we received the notice the other day, and I said, were you aware of this? And she said, no. She said, but I will reach out to the planning board, and I will get back to you. She said, because it just sounds like there is an application for it. We don't know, because I had, as well as other residents, when they started to demo the property over there that had been abandoned for some time, we were inquiring as to what was going to happen with the property. We even called the, the planning board to no avail. I left several messages, and no one ever return so when we received this letter you know all the tenements here were like well let's get on the call because obviously this is our chance to find out what's going on with the property which obviously sure. is in the letter and to ask any questions that we may have regarding this property because we have a lot of concerns down here in this area that need to be addressed so Ridley obviously reached out to the, your board on behalf of, of me giving her a call early today okay and, um and Stephen, um, Stephen Joseph was on the call and I've said on, I've attended many board meetings for the Department of Education here in the city and a lot of times there are human error where some things have not been added to the agenda that later in the evening said, oops, we forgot this one. Let's put this back on. So that's why I sat through it when I saw Stephen Joseph. I said, well, maybe there was an error they forgot to add it to the agenda. So let's just sit through it. I'm in my home. I'm relaxing. So it's okay. <laughs> and, and Ms. Frazier, um, we err on the other side of that if something's you know left out in error um we go out of our way to make sure that we don't hear it that night uh we want to make sure that everybody you know has has ample opportunity to speak and see the project that we're talking about so uh i'll follow up with councilwoman ridley tomorrow and um we'll make sure that you know we get this right for you yeah, before I, my, thank before you. My, thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Enjoy your night. Um, okay, so uh, we still have public comment open for, I forgot the address now, uh, for 108 Pamrapo Ave. If anybody wants to comment about 108 Pamrapo Ave, you could uh, raise your hand. It's a minor subdivision. Anybody for 108 Pam or Powell that wants to comment? Seeing no more public, I move to close the public portion. Seconded. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Cameron, um, you already gave us your recommendation, correct? Do you have anything else? Just that they, well, they already went on the record and said they agreed to the conditions. So staff recommends sure. approval. Okay, Sheriff, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve case P19-177 as presented to the board tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. All right, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gangadin. Aye. Commissioner Horton. Aye. Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Commissioner Torres. Muted. He's muted. Sorry oh, about that, guys. I said aye. It's All right. And Chairman Langston. Aye. All right. Motion carries all in favor with conditions. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, before I call memorialization, I just wanted everybody to look at the clock. It's 9.59. <laughs> we have no more applications on tonight. Look at us. Uh, all right, so let's call memorialization of resolutions, everybody.
Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to memorialize the following five resolutions. Uh, resolution number one is applicant wave two LLC for preliminary and final mobile site plan. Approval with C variances. Address is 175-185 Academy Street, block, uh, block uh, 3.13, case number P20-097. Next resolution is applicant Ramna Rayana Properties, LLC, for a one-year extension, a preliminary and final major site plan approval with C variances, address 307 Pine Street and 326 to 328 Johnston Avenue, block 17505, lots 10 and 11, uh, block, uh, I'm sorry, case number P20-148. Next resolution is uh, applicant T-Mobile Northeast, LLC, for minor site plan approval address at 131 Dudley Street, block 15901, lot 13, case number P19-081. Uh, next resolution is applicant 454 Second JC Group LLC for preliminary and final major site plan approval with bulk variance relief. Address at 454 Second Street, block 11008, lot 1.01. .01. Case number P20-128. I'll entertain a motion. Oh. That, that was only four resolutions, Chairman, because the fifth resolution we were we did not hear today. That was uh, uh, Pavonia, uh, Pavonia that Avenue. Gotcha. Oh, okay, Dr. gotcha. Gonzalez. We did actually hear that one. Yo, did we? Yeah, 618 Pavonia. I'm sorry. Okay. So yeah, we did. Case. We did hear that. Yeah, so, so the applicant, uh, the applicant uh, resolution is applicant six one eight Pavonia LLC for final major site plan, administrative amendment approval. Uh, address is thirty three dash thirty five Ripon Avenue and six sixteen dash six eighteen Pavonia Ave, block seven nine zero five, lots twenty twenty one twenty two and twenty three. Case number P20-171. Okay, I'll entertain a second, please. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Erica, could we have a roll call, please? Yes, Dr. Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Torres? Aye. Commissioner Gangadin? Aye. Commissioner Desai? Aye. Commissioner Horton? Aye. And Chairman Langston? Aye. Okay, motion carries, all in favor. Okay, thank you. Um, executive session, anybody? No. Still early tonight, guys. <laughs> Where are we meeting? Chris? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will uh, entertain whatever motion comes our way. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to uh, exit uh, to adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for adjournment. Thank you, everybody. We are adjourned. I apologize to anybody that's still on that expected another application tonight. Uh, we'll get it all worked out. And uh, enjoy your night, guys. Thank get you. Out and shovel. Take get care. out and shovel with all this extra time. Good night. <laughs>